Nubian Bookstore presents the ABC book. If you have children or know someone who have children, you can purchase this book to teach them their ABCs. This book can be purchased at the Nubian Bookstore in Morrow, Georgia, or on the internet at the websites for Amazon, Walmart, Barnes & Nobles. Please support Black-Owned Business and the Nubian Bookstore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a minute, it's your boy Chris and Box. We checking in, man. Back with another Untold Truth. This is on the homie Nords. First of all, man, let me give a big shout out to Nords, man. He could have done this interview with anybody, but he gave me an exclusive interview, man. And that's respect right there. But in this interview, this interview is fire, bro. I'm going to tell you, this is one of my favorite Untold Truths. We talk about everything from the lawsuit. You know, there were certain things in the lawsuit we couldn't really get into. But we talk about the lawsuit, his relationship with Smack. Chico Beasley, the whole URL situation. If y'all niggas like behind the scenes information, I gave you plenty of behind the scenes information. We talked about his start in battle rap with Smack. We talked about who he found in the proven ground and all everything, man. We talked about everything that we possibly can, man. Just when you thought you may have seen all the Norbs interviews you've seen online, you have not seen the Norbs Untold Truth, man. So make sure you subscribe to the Chris Unbiased channel, man. This channel is about to be lit for battle rap. So Let's just get it popping, man. Street Star North, the untold truth. URL. I'm sorry, man. I just asked the questions, man. Don't get mad at me, URL. I just asked the questions. When I pull up at events, I don't want no smoke. There are interviews, and then there's the untold truth. Oh, yeah. It ain't over, motherfuckers. All right, man. So you came out with this lawsuit. Yep. You serve URL. Yep. How are you able to determine your work? So when it comes to the answer, listen, I'm cool with everything you said. I'm absolutely cool with us, whatever. But, and, and I was specifically specifically speaking to Smack and Beasley, I said, yo, but I'm entitled. And Smack was basically, he was like, yo, what you mean entitled, Sean? Like, you know what? Maybe the 40 million, I'm tripping. Maybe I'm not tripping. Maybe I can't get 40 million. But if they say this, this, and this right now, I'll settle. Do you have a dollar amount in your head that you'll be like, I may do something with this? Then you gonna lie, you piece of shit. Yo. And I get up and I'm holding my ribs. And I'm just like, yo, I think my shit is broke. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yeah, my ribs is broke. Like, I'm in, I can't lift my, my right arm. So, whenever Beasley come, and Beasley like, yo, yo, you good? And I'm looking at him like, <laughs> Beasley ass was you good? <laughs> nigga, like, I just got my ass whooped. Nigga, what the fuck you talking about? I'm good. And at this point, like, Beasley's like, yo, don't worry about it, I got the footage. I'm not going to drop it. I'm going to make sure it don't bleed. Yeah, that's been one of your, you know, biggest criticisms. Um, that Ask people... anybody that's on the URL, did I take money from them? So and you never charge people for a proven ground. Norbs is a funny nigga, bro. And th that nigga twerk told me they did they did double dated before, and he tried to fuck his baby mom. <laughs> Norms a wild dude, man. He fat. <laughs> fat that niggas ain't got Spanish. no limit. And fat in Spanish, so niggas don't got no limit, man. How the hell are you gonna get fired on your day off? I don't know. When Calico said something and was mocking the situation, I was hurt because I got a different love for Calico. Like, I don't invite, you know, the nigga make a bit of my crib and help my daughter. So I was hurt by Calico. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, like I was super hurt by Calico um, because like, I felt like I had a different relationship with Calico. And I felt like him speaking on that and not even reaching out to me to even know what actually went down or, or what not, I felt like it was fucked up. KD comes up to me, 
with the band. I mind you, I've been standing out there for an hour and a fucking half, dog. Now you got my band, right? I'm mad. She goes out there like a big nerd. You feel me? So I'm like, yo, just give my man my band. Let's go in. Now they telling me my man can't come in with me. I'm a partner in the company. This nigga wife came in. Everybody coming in. They let Kayshawn homeboy in, bro. But you can't get your man. I can't get me and my man. I cried with them. You know what I'm saying? We all we all lost together. You feel me? We built this shit together. You feel me? What 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 happened? You know what I'm saying? Was it the bag? And that's what people understand, bro. Like, money changes people, bro. Yo, what up, man? It's your boy Chris. I'm Bias Review. Checking in, man. Back with another Untold Truth. Here with the homie Norts. What up, Nort? What's good, man? Just chilling. Chilling in this uh, beautiful day. It's pretty nice, actually. It's not that humid. So. How, how you doing today, man? I'm blessed, man, to be honest. I've just been um, really just kicking it with the family. Kind of enjoying this break from the the battle world. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I peek in here and there, but um, I've been chilling, man. I, I, feel, I feel good, man. Just, I don't even know, man. Like, freedom. In a sense, that, 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 that's, that's pretty much how I can define it. Now, a lot's been going on with you, man, in this past year. So I think the proper way to kind of set up this interview is let's just go back to the beginning, you know, and let's just explain how you became a part of URL and your relationship with Smack and how it all started from the beginning. Um, man, this shit crazy. So back in about 2008, I was actually pretty much doing music and shit like that, uh, manager, artist. And um, back then, you know, the DVD game was kind of fizzling out, you know what I'm saying, in a sense. But it was still dope to be on, like the Sub-Zero, Come Up DVD, Smack DVD, all those DVDs. So, you know, at the time, people were always, there was always like a legend behind being on Smack DVD as an artist. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I was working with my bro Zaire out of Brooklyn, shout out to Zaire. And I was doing a lot of like cameos in his videos, just doing different networking and working with different companies. And uh, Zah told me that he was shooting um, Big Bros movie, uh, what's, uh, My Life is a Movie, from Mano, the remix. So he said, yo, come out, Smack gonna be there, you know what I'm saying, just poly with him, and you know, there's gonna be other people there. So I said, yo, fuck it, I'll come through. So I was supposed to actually do a cameo in the video. I was supposed to be uh, me, Mano, shout out to Shay Davis, True Life was in it, Nori. And I was gonna be in a scene with them. But I was running around, I got there late. So I seen Smack. And I never knew I never knew what the hell Smack looked like, to be honest with you. So I see this little dude, big red hoodie, you know what I'm saying, like a six X hoodie and whatever, just kinda like, you know, whatever. He's like, yo, that's Smack. So I said, shit, fuck it, I ran up on him. I said, hey yo, blah blah blah, whatever, whatever, this is Menorah's manage math, blah, 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 whatever the hell it was. Exchange numbers. And then from there, we started kind of building a rapport. And, um, you know, I was going, I was working with All Access DVD. I was doing show uh, interviews with um, Craze and just doing the network thing, doing the management thing, trying to break music and things of that nature. So me and Smack kept going back and forth. He took a liking to me. And, um, you know, he was kind of transitioning or trying to transition from the DVD era to the real world at that time, 2009, which basically became, if you, if you follow hip hop, the DVD and mixtape game was like from, well, the mixtape game was like from the early 90s to mid 2000s. The DVD game was kind of from like 99 on. And it started to fizzle out when Worldstar came about, uh, all, uh, what is it, uh, On Smash and Two Dope Boys. So Smack started losing his, his fan base and, and things of that nature. And, he was trying to figure a way to transition into something else. 
or be able to, to, to continue to make money off of this content. But the problem was with the internet and these websites taking over, you didn't have to go buy a DVD no more. That, that era was kind of over. So if you guys recall, he, he tried to transition into SmackTube. I don't know if you remember what SmackTube is. Or, it was pretty much like a colossal failure. Like it was, wasn't good. His, his, his ideology behind it was pretty much, you know, get up, get up our stuff up over, over to the site and draw people on there. The problem is, you don't have to record at that time. You just grab videos from everywhere, and everybody had a camera at the time. So he was trying to kind of stay relevant. And at that time, like Sub Zero and you know, the Come Up, everybody was kind of like Cocaine City. They were kind of like taking over the DVD game. And it was still kind of fizzling out. So he had um we had spoke, we were doing different talks of uh what can we do and things of that nature. And um he wanted me to help him cross over and kind of become relevant again in terms of the internet. Because dog, like if you drop the DVD, like Smack would drop at one point for let's say a hundred thousand DVDs and sell them. Now, when you go into these spots, they're not buying them wholesale, they'll buy you two and then they'll bootleg them. So his money was shrinking. So he had to transition. And um, that's how I actually met Smack. And, you know, in the beginning, I was like, you know what? You know, we'll figure something out. I wasn't, I'm not no fucking blogger. I just knew the game. I knew, like, I'm a person that understands how to see what's behind that wall that nobody sees or try to look past what's exactly in front of you. And I was like, yo, you know what? I'm going to build with him. But at that time, I was managing math. I was going, that's why I started going to battles. Blue Collar TV started inviting me. So it was all of us. It was like me, Arsenal, Goods. I met Cortez. We would all just go to these battles, but it was like everybody you see that's up there that's popping, we would just go. Clips and show up. We would go to this place called Soul Food, which was a sneaker store within Lower East, like the Lower East Side. And that was when I started really fucking with it. People knew I was mass manager. I was going to these events and I was enjoying them, watching like uh, Miguel Diablo, aka Deacon Force, Cortez battle to do that, that, uh, the, Joe, whatever, Joe something, I forgot his name, slapped his hat. So I'm starting to see the culture, and I'm kind of noticing, like, yo, this shit is kind of dope. Like, I fuck with it. Like, it's a different vibe. Like, you there? And I'm talking about, we in sneaker stores, bro. Like, just all of us just chilling, watching battles. Arts pull up. Yo, look, I'm about to drop this battle. Look, my battle with uh, Tech 9 about to drop. Or oh, this shit, we just watching it all together. Like, we all homies. There's no real, there's no Hollywood shit. So from then, that's when I really started fucking with it. But I was still working with math on music. I didn't really have no interest in battle rap. But I had all the plugs because I was running to everybody and I knew everybody. So when it came to it, um, that's pretty much how I was involved in it. And then... You link up with Smack. Yeah, I linked up with Smack, all that shit. It all just kind of just formed me like that. I'm just doing music, bro. Like, I'm not even really caring about battle rap. Like, my focus is I'm going to work with math. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get this shit popping. He got a buzz because his battle shit. He got in his dumbass fight with those. We're gonna try to change the narrative. Like it was very important to me to change the narrative of how people looked at math. Because when I looked at math, I didn't see what a lot of people thought, which was thug or not talented. And I feel like he was being overlooked because of that. And you know, math is has his own issues and shit like that. And I took it as like a personal thing to let's change, let's change the narrative of you. And that's when we started working on the ACMDs and shit like that. And at the same time. With Smack, I was just trying to figure out, yo, we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna pretty much get on the DVD, we're gonna drop it, Mano's on the cover, and I was working with other artists, I was working with Liaison, so if you watch those early videos, I had like Liaison on there, Math is on this, so now me and Smack are kind of like working, hey man, look, I got, we're gonna shoot this video, we're gonna come through, Matt Smack will come through, so we built our rapport through that, like we had a mutual respect, I had a respect for him for his hustle, and, his, and what he did, and he had a respect for me for just like, yo, this nigga is everywhere. And um, fast forward, battle rap started kind of to get a little more popular. And again, me and Smack not even having no conversations about battle rap. It was just, he would do a battle occasionally. Like, he wasn't really fucking with the battle shit like that. He would just do the DVD and keep it as extra content on the DVD. You feel me? So he was trying to get the Math Rex battles. Like, yo, we're such a, we had multiple conversations. Yo, can we get this Math Rex shit going? So while me and Math are doing the Math Rex shit, we start having fun with it. I'm like, Math, man, let's make this shit fun. And Math, a lot of people know, is fucking hilarious, bro. So me and Math would be cooking up shit in the crib. Like, we'd be like, yo, Rex just said he about to have a baby. He got, like, six baby carriages. So we came up with, like, a blog, like, yo, we're going to do, um, 
<laughs> we did a feed, uh, what is it, feed the homeless for T Rex. You go back and watch that. We did that. So when we started doing it, Rex started going back and forth. Now the battle got super hot. So this is how Smack's like, nah, we got to get this battle for this DVD because these niggas is buzzing. Like everybody wanted it. Smack calls me out the blue. Yo, Sean, we shout, Sean. You know how Smack talks. I don't know what the fuck he was saying half the time. He's like, yeah, Sean, you know. What's good? How you been? We try, still trying to figure something out, blah, blah, blah. And then he asked me, like, yo, what's up with the, with the man from Rex battle? And I'm like, yo, big homie, I don't know, bro. Like, these niggas ain't come up with money, playing games over here, bro. So now I'm stuck in a fucked up situation. Smack's like, yeah, nah, nah, Shang, hold on, Shang. I got the money. Let's do this shit on the DVD. I'm like, all right, you got the money? He's like, but don't make no announcements. I have an investor. I said, all right, I've heard this shit before. Fuck it. So I called Matt and said, listen, I may have another. We may still come through with that money. So I get a call from Smack. It's like a three-way call. So a dude gets on the phone named Swag out of California. He's working with Bur uh, Bergang. I think Bergang. Whatever fucking Jim Jones is. I think it's Bergang. Tomorrow, Atlantic Records will be there. And we're going to have the meeting. We're going to make it happen. Now, I'd already met Beasley before the NYB meeting. Which I don't we fucking we meet we're trying to come like come to, to, together like a union type shit. So he's like, yo, we're gonna meet up with Beasley, Smack, and uh, Rex, Math, and we, we met at Atlantic Records on the Avenues of America. They agreed to taking the battle, just so we eventually come up with a whole thing of we're gonna come up with a system or we're gonna come up with three celebrity judges. But uh, at that point, you know, me and Smack were really talking probably the most at that point. Me, Smack and Again, we're trying to figure out how we can connect. Maybe a week later, I get a phone call from Beasley. And he's like, hey, Norbs, what's up, buddy? Not oh, Beasley talks to me. What's up, Beasley? How you doing, man? Listen, um, me and Smack want to have a conversation with you about... Well, let me, let me, let me explain to you. Uh, you ever heard of UFC? And I'm like... Yeah, but I don't really fuck with it. I'm a boxing dude. I'm Puerto Rican, bro. We watch boxing, right? I'm not a big fan of the UFC, and I don't really get it. You know what I mean? And if you know Beasley, he's like a fucking Jean-Claude Van Damme's, whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? So he's like, we, we watch what Grind Time is doing, and we see what's going on. And they're popping right now on the Internet. And we feel like the urban community doesn't have a voice, or they don't have a movement, and they're being alienated. And he's like, we want to create some shit called the URL based off of the UFC because you're not a big UFC fan. So I'm like, okay, what does it stand for? The Ultimate Rap League. So in my head, I'm like, fuck, you want me to, like, you want me to clap for you? Like, okay. He goes, well, we don't really have much knowledge of battle rap. So I'm kind of like, yo, you guys got, deep, you know, battles? He's like, no, like, you know, we did the battle shit, but it was never a focal point for us. You know what I'm saying? So, we want you to partner up with us. We want, we want you to bring you in as a partner in the situation and, you know, help create this shit because we don't, we're not, we don't know, we don't know who the fuck is who. Like, there's no real, like, I guess back then they were just like, they got this dude versus this dude and that's pretty much it was random. It wasn't necessarily planned out in a sense. And they wanted to literally legitimize it, but they didn't know where to start. So in my head, I'm like, okay, so what are you saying? So he kind of breaks it down to me, partnering up and putting the stuff together because they don't know who's who or whatnot. Like, there's no real structure to the shit. If you didn't do math, you versus math? That wouldn't have been a, you, it wouldn't have been a league. I can't agree with that, T-Rex. How? There was no other battle rappers around. Everybody quit. They would have got somebody. Smack, smack would have got some. Smack ain't no no money. I don't know. I know, he ain't no money. He, he knew plenty of people. He from Smack DVD, he had plenty of people on Smack DVD. Party Artie was dead. Rest in peace. Murder Mook and Lux quit. Only person was left was Rex. Who? Ankaza? J Mills? Quit. Young Money? So you saying there were no active battle rappers who you battled math? Well, math was active, so, so evidently you were math. 
And nobody knew math. They knew math was swinging the punch. I helped math behind you. You helped math too. Huh? And when I'm talking to Beasley in the conversation, I was pretty blown away the fact that they didn't really know anything at all. But they were like, yo, we think this could work, but we need you. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, partner up with Smack. You're going to partner in a situation that's completely new, challenging. Nobody's fucking with this nigga. Okay. I said, I'm with it. So he goes, yo, we need you to start by setting up the event. I said, cool. What's the budget? <laughs> Beasley goes, uh, no budget. How's the beast? How do you expect me to put this event together? These guys, are gonna, he's wait, they want to get paid? So apparently nobody's getting fucking paid back then. But I like challenges. So I kind of was like, you know what? All right. I'm going to make it happen. He's like, you're gonna make it happen? I said, yeah, I'm gonna start presenting shit up. I'm gonna start, let me, let me, let me get in my brain. Now, remember, I was going to a lot of these events. So, the first person I reached out to was Cortez. Because Beasley, is, Beasley, actually, Beasley, let me go back. He said, we got young Miles on board. And we, and we you know, obviously, we have the Rex and Math. You know what I'm saying? He goes, that's pretty much what we have. So, I was like, all right, let me get Miles' number. I called Cortez. I said, Core. Because Core was my guy at the time. He's still my guy. I was like, Cord, look, I got an opportunity for you. I said, yo, look, me and Smack coming together. Please, we're going to start a league called URL. Like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, well, Smack, me and Beasley are putting together a fucking league. Like, why time, but for Smack, he's like, word? Cortez didn't even fucking hesitate. He's like, yo, bad, let's do it. I said, I got miles for you. Nah, I don't want miles, bro. He got killed by Lux. And I'm thinking this nigga, like, no, it's still fucking young miles. You know <laughs> right, right. So... I'm calling everybody, bro. I call disaster. Because this like this was just coming off the MTV shit. This couldn't do it. I tried to set him up with at Ice. I never spoke to Ice because Disaster couldn't do it because he was under contract with MTV. I'm fucking calling everybody. I called Verb. Verb wanted like a thousand dollars. I was like, Brad, Verb, I ain't got his ad, man. You know, Verb was real humble about it though. He was like, nah, you know, I can't do it. Well, I'm calling everybody. So I, I called Miles and said, you don't want a battery. He goes, yo, we got X Factor. Right? I was like, I didn't know who fuck X Factor was. I never watched it. Pussy nigga, I hate you. I hate you so much that if you was a bitch, I'll rape you. Hey, that was some hard shit to say. But this bullshit I don't play. And I'm tempted to fuck your bitch. I'm just a hard dick away. See you? You? Holy holy. So I called Smack, and Smack was like, oh, Sean, X Factor, Sean? Sean, that's, that's what we got, that's what we doing, Sean? And I'm like, for a nigga that don't fucking know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess he had battled on Smack DVD before, and Smack wasn't a fan of him. So I was like, yo, relax. So me and B's, like, me and B's always had that relationship. Like, we understood each other, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Smack was, I was like, whatever. I was like, so B's like, yo, just keep doing what you're doing. So I called Rich Dollars. I called Rich. I didn't really know Rich Mahone. But Rich was like, I said, Rich, you know, I'm doing this league with Smack. So when you say you don't really know these people, like how how are you getting their information? Like how are you how are you meeting the Cortez so, X Factor? So and, I knew Rich Cortez. Dollars? I knew Cortez. So I met X Factor through Miles. So at this point, you gotta think about it. I don't have a budget. Whatever relationships I'm having, I'm exhausting them. Like I'm like, you know what? I watch this DVD. I watch them. Like I know who everybody is. But I don't have the contacts. Like, a lot of people may know who I am, but they don't know how to get to me. So, I called Goods. And I was like, Goods, you know, I think he had Battle Rich Dollars for some money or something. And he beat Rich for, for the money. And he got me Richie's number. And Miles put me on the X Factor. So, I already had Miles. Miles was the number for Miles was given to me through Beasley. So, I'm reaching out to everybody. Bow, 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 bow. And Goods gives me Rich Dollars' number. I call Rich Dollars. And I'm like, Rich, um, this is the situation. Richie was like, to get on smack, I'm with it. All right, fuck it. He's like, new battle league, I'm with it. They didn't ask for a fucking dollar. I gave him miles. He said, give me miles. Cortez ends up with X Factor. I'm like, nah, I want more in this card. So <laughs> Miles called me. He's like, yo, there's a guy I think you should check out named Big T. So I'm like, who? He's like, yeah, he's on lines. So he sends me this fucking grainy footage, bro. I couldn't even tell if Big T was fat. At this point, it was so fucked up the footage. I 
I watch the footage. I say, oh, this fat nigga's dope. So I bring him on. So Blue Collar TV was like, yo, how about Miguel Diablo? And I'm like, yo, I like Miguel Diablo, which was Deacon Frost. Okay, so we did our history. Now we're at the first event, and now you're meeting Chico for the first time. Take yeah. me through that, and take me through your initial meeting with Chico, how it was, and what his role was, and what you knew his role to be at that time. Um, the question is, that's the first time I actually met Chico, but I actually spoke to him on the phone. So when, Spr when Smack brought him to the table, it was kind of like, you know, he was his focal point was building the website, and he was a, a tech-savvy individual. You know what I mean? So that was how I met Chico. Like, he's just there. I don't really have no... No real him. rapport with him? Yeah, like, I don't really know him like that. Like, my rapport is Smack and Beasley. So when, when they when they let you know that, okay, this is this is another partner, you know, with the URL or whatever, and it's, it's y'all four, at this time, it's all a verbal thing between y'all at, at this point, between you, you and Smack, right? It's just like, I just want you to be... I mean, when we were when we was coming together, it was it was all conversation. I don't I don't believe anybody expected this shit to go where it went. Okay, so then you start doing more and more events. You eventually do the Midwest Massacre. You do Big T and Hitman Holla. Yeah. You end up doing Math and Averb. So are you re you're recruiting these guys? Be you're you're the main person recruiting these guys, and it's because your relationship with Math early on, and you're going to events and you basically meeting yeah. most of these people. So at this time, you have the relationships with these artists more so than Smack, Beasley, or Chico. Well, Smack and Beasley didn't know anything in a sense to where they didn't have the relationships, nor they had the knowledge of who was popping and who was not. If you didn't do math, you versus math? It wouldn't have been a, you, it wouldn't have been a league. I can't agree with that, T-Rex. How? There was no other battle rappers around. Everybody quit. They would have got somebody. Smack, Smack would have got somebody. Smack ain't no nobody. I don't know. I know, yeah, buddy. Like, when when we came to the partnership, they were kind of like, well, not kind of, they were like, yo, we don't, like, we did battles, you feel me? But it wasn't like, you got to stand like that, that era was more like, all right, this your man versus your man, go. And that's it. Like, their focus wasn't battle. Like, I, I, like they almost stepped into it. So their knowledge wasn't really into that. So, you know, when, when I came along, I already had the relationships, like you said, and I know who was going to pop, who was not. So I was sitting there like, all right, boom, I'm going to look at, I got Big T, the fat dude. And I already knew of Hitman Verb and these dudes. I knew of Disaster. I reached out to Disaster to try to get him on the car. Like, I was hitting everybody. The problem was, there was no money. Like, they, we only paid for that swag battle. I mean, the swag only paid for the math battle versus Rex. So at this point, Verb had a little buzz already. He had already battled Marv one. He was already like, you know, he had the SB battle on, on whatever. And some of these guys were already getting paid by grind time. Where heard you from? I'm at your set. Black on black, strap on deck. I grab his head and his heels, then pull into this backbone stretch. Oh. Throw him down, tap on that. Run laps on that. Every time Verb got a battle, the hood bet snaps on that. Impressive. How I'm in my third round, and I still ain't cracked the fat joke yet. Oh. Remember I told you, when Swag got locked up, the money kind of dried up, so we had to figure out money. So we were doing, you know, Swag and Beasley still had a little bit of money or whatever, whatever they had to invest, you know what I'm saying? I was, you know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't rich, you know what I'm saying? And we would use ticket sales to sell, for the most part, and then cover whatever these niggas would pick it up, right? And grind time, I don't know how the fuck they was getting money, but they was signing to try to book the same guys. So I'm like, yo, this shit's me and Beasley, I remember we'd be at the office, like, again, it would always be me, Beasley, and Smack. And, like, <coughs> and I'd be like, yo, bro, like, how are we gonna compete with these niggas? Well, they paying mad money. And I remember one day I'm in the office and I was like, yo, dog, you want I'm like, if you watch the NBA, you watch the NFL, eventually Michael Jordan gotta re retire and Kobe Bryant takes it, the, the mantle, to the next person, right? Why are we continuing to pay and, and, and argue for the same individuals and continue to raise the price? If we just take a step back, right, and we create the new wave, and we can control the money and have our own identity. Because the problem with like, 
and this is not a shot at um, ARP or anything like that. The problem with like ARP is like he doesn't have an identity because he uses pretty much the same individuals that were branded by URL. So backtrack to what he was at. I didn't want to be identified as what's what's going to separate us from Quanta. So I, I was I sat with Beasley and I was like, bro, I got an idea that's going to work. I just don't have a name for it. But it's basically creating a farm system. But I go out there and I just start picking up new guys. Now, mind you, I was already bringing in Suge and Surf and fucking everybody. So I said, why don't we create the new wave? Because we create and we brand our own stars. Right? That'll cut costs. We don't have to pay whatever. We'll take a we'll take a hit for the first few months. Fuck it. Me and you, we, we have we have a fucking the same company, the same type of company, right? And now, Battle Rapper A can go to you, then go to me. Now the price goes from a thousand, fifteen, two thousand, twenty-five, and by the time we turn around, bro, the fucking events cost way too much money. So in my head, I was like, fuck them. Let them pay these right ten thousand. I don't pay these fucking guys all this money. Let's create a new wave. So in my head, like in my head, I'm thinking, if we sacrifice for a few months and we build up these kids, they're going to be superstars. And they're going to forget about those guys. Let them overpay. You know what I'm saying? And in my head, I'm like, let them go bankrupt. I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. Because you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not making money. We're doing this with shits and giggles at this point. So Beasley was like, oh, that's, that's a crazy ass idea. I didn't have a fucking name, man. One of the intros was sitting there. We had one of these intros, and I think Beasley did like one of these things, and he said something about proving grounds or something where you got to prove. And I was like, that's it, proving grounds. And we, and we sat there, and we were like, we're going to market it. And then from there, I was like, new challenge. We're going to create a wave. We're not going to sit there and focus on the Rexes and the Mavs and the guys that are going to cost mad money. We're going to create an entire new wave. Because if you remember around the time, Brian Time had an event where he did, I think, I, I want to say Awkwards and Rex. And if I'm not mistaken, I know it was the event where they had this nigga perform. What's the guy from Philly? Freeway. So they spent on her like $50,000. That was pretty much the end of Grind Time, to be honest with you, because they overpaid. They didn't have the money. And it, it, it just, it was like, bro, like, it was like, we were always 10 steps ahead because... We thought, like, with that idea, it was like, nah, let them spend their money. We'll take a hit, and we'll go. And then, you know, Beasley's a very smart individual in terms of marketing. And he's like, yo, we're going to market like this. Beasley comes up with these, yo, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And like, well, I'm like, yeah, son, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. And I'm going to do this, we're going to do that. And then we started bringing in the first wave. Proving grounds were better than the fucking regular events. Like, I'm like, oh, this shit dope. And it was, it was really gratifying because it was like nobody knew these things from fucking, from a can of paint, from most of them. And I'm just like, all right, boom. We're going we're gonna to push him. No, nah, not him. He's not good enough. And a lot of times, bro, I would know. How do you feel about this whole PG, URL contract situation, trying to get exclusive rights to these battle rappers, not enabling them to better in other leagues or however they're doing it. Yeah, man, you're one of the dream stages. It's like, why wouldn't you want to be there? I just honestly feel if you're going to be paying which I pay, which is nobody else's business, but I pay which I pay, which is not really going to hold a nigga down for as far as as long as y'all take to actually do another event since they got to stick with y'all. It's not going to hold nobody down. Y'all would probably have a lot more couple events and to pay them what y'all offering, they be popping, because I, I, I would love, you know what I'm saying? And it was crazy as that, let me tell y'all this at the same token, man. Y'all have a chance to negotiate y'all contract, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Y'all get the opportunity to do that. If you don't feel it's worth it, don't sign it and complain about it. But let me ask you this, I always felt like you took a lot of bullets for the Proven Ground contracts because you were like the Proven Ground guy. Yeah, but I always felt like it was a total team yeah, I mean, effort in wanting to in place those bro, contracts. I went to Vlad TV. Shout out to Vlad, and um, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want." I was like, "Bro, it's business. If you want to be run, if you want to look like a business, right? You gotta act like a business." 
So I made a comment on, on Vlad, like, yes, we do have contracts and we're going to block battles if people don't respect the contracts. And that's when a lot of the, 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 the narrative came to me and I was getting shots and, you know, people were getting upset. And a lot of the shit was basically them not getting the opportunities they wanted or they, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I didn't mind protecting. To me, it was like me, in a sense, protecting my partners and taking the heat because they they were never built for that. They're, that's not what they do. I was very overprotective of Smack. I didn't like people said anything bad about him or Beasley, even Chico. So right, I didn't mind. We're going to get into that in a minute. The contracts, did you feel like was there were so many battle leagues coming into place trying to book yeah. the talent that you weren't so you wanted to try to lock them in? Bro, I had so many conversations with And how were, how were these conversations, because we always hear publicly about battlers saying, oh, fuck that, you know, I should be the battle where I want to be. What was the conversation of that, how were they sounding when you presented them with the contract? Were they 100% so, all in and then, or were they Chris, keeping the same energy? You're, you're not popping. Norbs is coming to you saying, listen, I'm going to get you hot. This is what I want. They're going to sign the contract. But now they sign the contract, they're in there, right? Nobody's booking them beforehand, right? But now they're popping. Everybody's coming now. Right? Or King of the Dot or, or RBE or whoever the fuck. And they're all not getting booked now. Why? Because they're popular. So now I can't blame these kids for, not, for, for wanting to go somewhere else when they're not getting the same money or... You're asking somebody who probably doesn't have a job to turn out $1,500 and we're paying them 400 You know what I'm saying? So that's where that was, but at the same time, you got to be firm. And I'm going to speak for my people. It's like, yo, you want to go? Fine, we'll find somebody else. And a lot of times I didn't want to do that, but at the end of the day, it's business. And you have to, if one person's not going to respect the contract and you allow it, then nobody's going to respect it. Now, what do you say to people that say, you didn't find B Magic. Uh, Gracie sent you the footage, so you shouldn't get the credit for it because Gracie was the one that saw I the mean, talent. What, what do you say to that? Did Jerry West trade for Kobe Bryant? Who told him about Kobe Bryant? But he had to make that decision to make that trade, right? He had to make the decision to go and scout him or to send the scouts over there to him. Look, you know how much okay. footage... I'm, it's like, I'm, think, fucking, I'm fucking with the analogy. I'm think about this, it. bro. If it was that easy, right? You don't think KOTD, RBE, any of those guys would have a better roster than us when I was making the decisions? Look, it's not about who sees them. It's identifying that they're them. I used to get thousands of fucking videos and links, bro. Like, like Troy Mitchell sent me the link for Swamp. But he also sent me a thousand links to other people. No, he's not good enough. Man, nah, no. Nah. As soon as I seen Swamp within eight bars, I said, I said, hey, Troy, can he be ready in a week? He's a star. Troy was like, what? You serious? I was like, no, he's a superstar, legit superstar. It's not about. You said Troy Mitchell or Troy Martin? Troy, Troy Martin. Troy, ah, Troy Martin. Yeah, shout out Troy Martin, man. I, I got to give him a shout out on camera real quick because, you know. I'm going to put the link at the bottom. Y'all make sure y'all support the man clothing brand, black owned, all, the whole nine. Make sure y'all support him. Shout out to him. He's a good dude too. So, you know, you know, it's not about who sends it. Like, bro, there's a million scouts that go out there. Oh, this guy's dope. Check him out. Do you feel you did too many proving ground battles? I feel like it got out of hand because too many, too many, too many Indians and not enough, uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Everybody wanted to be that guy because I was making money with the situation. Like, I was doing hostings all over the country. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was feeding my family for the most part. So I feel like a lot, like a lot of these dudes don't even get paid. They just want to look good in front of the camera like, yeah, you know, I put them on. That was me. Like, shit is corny. That wasn't what I was doing it for. It wasn't for self, for self-promotion. Like, I was generally taking ill will out of Pontiac and putting them on the fucking stage, putting them on TV, putting snow on there. And that's what made me feel good. I never asked ill will for a fucking dollar. I ain't asked for none of these people I put on for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? I did that shit out of my out of my heart, bro. You know what I mean? So I didn't compromise my integrity, bro. Now people be like, oh, you took money. I definitely took bread for certain people that wanted an opportunity to rap in front of me. But I didn't compromise my integrity on my brand. Yeah, that's been one of your, you know, biggest criticisms. Um, is that Ask people, anybody that's on the URL, did I take money from them? So and you never charge people for a proving ground? I didn't say that. Okay. Anybody that, 
listen, if you want to rap in front of me, I'm not wasting my time. If I already told you, yo, you're not good enough. Yo, I'll pay for the spot. Bro, I wasn't getting bread like that. I got to feed my daughter. I got to feed my son. I got to feed my family. You know what I'm saying? But I would always tell them, like, listen, I'm not going to compromise my integrity. If you're not what I'm looking for, and I'm trying to tell them, like a lot of times, like, look, it's not going to work. You got to you gotta show me what it is. And a lot of them, nah, just give me the op. I'm like, all right, cool. But I'm not going to put you on, right, if you're not good enough. I don't give a fuck how much you pay me. I'm not going to compromise the brand that I love and my integrity. All right, y'all, this is Chris Unbiased checking in, man. As you can see, I got the Nord's lawsuit paperwork right here. You stated in this paperwork, Nord's, you are responsible for bringing in the following talent. Let, let, let me go over. This is a very impressive list. Let me go over. Yep. Cortez. Yep. Big T. Yep. O Red. Yep. Shotgun Shug. Yep. John John the Don. Yep. B Magic. Yep. Bill Collector. Yep. Clean Paper. Yep. Verb. Yep. Young Ill. Yep. JC. Yep. Emerson Kennedy. Yep. Jerry West. Yep. Ill Will. Yep. Av. Yep. T Top. Yep. Briz. Yep. Chess. Yep. Saga. Yep. Prep. Yep. Geechee Gotti. Yep. Twerk. Yep. Jazz. Yep. Big Cannon. Yep. Don Marino. Jada Nightwing. Yep. yep. Snow. Mike P. Yep. Chef Trez. Yep. Ryder. Young Cannon. Prez Mafia. Mm -hmm. Swamp. Yep. Is it bittersweet looking at the looking at the uh, Ultimate Madness and seeing that? Most of that is what you pretty much found it. Yeah, you know it's funny. And right? now you see them. like smacking them, acting like these my gunners. He and you nah. To be honest with you, no. Um, it just proves my point to the fans of my impact. So it wasn't bittersweet. Like I actually was very proud of Fonz because they tried to bury Fonz because they didn't want they didn't want to prove me right. You know what I'm saying? And I was very proud of Fonz. Fonz is a great guy. And he, he deserved the 25. And I told people he was going to win it. And I'm proud of Jaden Nightwing. The same thing. Like, you know. Now, I've been knowing you for a long time. And every time I talk to you, you want to do judge battles. Absolutely. And now that URL is doing judge battles, you did mean they steal your idea, Nords? I got I to gotta ask you, man. Did, 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 did they... Uh, you mean did, you mean did they, did they take uh, your did they take your judge battle idea and they, run with they it? They took man. the last man standing tournament. They took that and and they also took the uh, the combine and turned it into the crucible. Like it is what it is. Like they know it. I know it. We're not stupid. <laughs> like it is what it is. When I had the meeting about the crucible, right? And P calls me SKG on the phone, and this is after like we kind of squashed some of the issues with me and P, but. He's like, yo, you know, we can't do, I have this great idea. I'm listening to the idea. And I'm sitting there listening to the idea, right? And I'm like, damn, this shit sound exactly like the combine. It's exactly the same thing. And um, he's like, yo, what you think? Because he's like, you know, we can't do this without you. You're a jerk. People, people, people love to hate you. And we need you to play that character in this, in this idea. But it wasn't named The Crucible yet. So he's like, we just gotta come up with the name. And I was like, yo, you know, it sounds a lot like the combine. And KG the poet says, yeah, just call it the combine. That's exactly what it is. And I start laughing. I said, listen, guys, you know, I'm cool with it, whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you want to run with it, we run with it, whatever. And KG was like, you know, it's crucible. I mean, that's the uh, combine. And um, you know, when all that shit went down, they didn't even call me. Tell me they all of them make an announcement about changing the proven and they change it to the crucible and it was the same it was my concept. And I actually texted me, I said, Yo, bees, like you don't think you would call your partner and let them know you're oh, you know, it's just a lot going on and, and he was like, But it's not gonna affect what you got going on. And I was like, Yo, every time this nigga talks to me, I feel like now I'm being lied to. And I was just like, Whatever, bro. Like I I was just fed up at this point, you know what I'm saying? talk about as URL is growing and y'all are doing you know summer madness after summer madness gnome after gnome is your relationship with smack and chico still good at this time let's just say even as far back as summer madness five maybe the hollow you know let's just go back as far as maybe hollow and clips do, do you and chico have a good relationship at this time or, um, or has it been deteriorating no man i mean it's it's always been a weird thing with chico like, i always felt like chico had some 
resentment towards me. Maybe like, yo, why is he here or like whatever, but he never really came to me. So I, I, I this is all assumptions. But me and Chico's fallout was around, I'm gonna say it was on the Jonah situation. The Jonah situation I was really upset about because I felt like, so the Jonah situation goes as this. I thought Jonah was a top prospect. I seen him in Detroit at, um, uh, Chris McCody's event. So Marv Warner's like, yo, check this dude out. So I see him come on, long hair, whatever. He starts spitting. I'm like, yo, this dude is fire. So in my eyes, I'm like, yo, he's not white. He's not black. He's an Albanian. Albanians are loyal. I can make something out of this kid. Whatever. He does his PG. I was 100% right. He has one of the greatest PGs ever. I got to hold his footage, though. Because I'm like, yo, we got to put this dude on the contract. For whatever reason, you know, he had, and, and this is he this is what he had to do. He had certain things that he wanted to be clarified, and he wanted certain things in his contract. But for some reason, every time we sent him a contract, and Chico was the contract guy, he wouldn't put in the stuff that he wanted. So... We was doing the, um, we was at CBS. We was doing, um, I think it was for the Hollow and, and Clips battle. We were doing like, um, promo. So, Smack asked me, yo, what's up with the chick, with, the, with Jonah? I said, yo, your man is bugging. And again, like, me and Chico don't really got the relationship. And I kept asking him, and he kept, I mean, I lost, we had the relationship. But every time I asked him, he wasn't doing what I was asking. The shit still prolonged. It took months for this nigga's um, contract to be done. Eventually his footage gets leaked out, right? The PG. So we had a, Beasley ends up rectifying the situation. Joe and I go to self manage, gets on stage, Smack puts him on, he's like, yo, y'all wanna see him versus disaster? The crowd kinda like, was booing. But they love Joe and I. But Joe and I didn't really recognize that he was his own star. You didn't need disaster. Joe and I really felt like he needed disaster. And we prolonged the situation so much that it was fucked up. So boom, what happens is, the next day, King of the Dot drops a slap in our face. And it's like, Jonah versus Disaster at the bunker. Some shit, I think it was the bunker. So everybody was mad, so we had a call. And Chico calls me. And he's like, what the fuck I told you? Da -da 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 -da. It's your fault. And I was like, my fault? So nigga, go fuck yourself. I said, nigga, you, Hesitated on the, on the on the contract. Don't put it on me. Now, mind you, when we lose, we lose together. And we win, win together. When he pointed the finger at me, I was like, what? And I told him, go fuck himself. Ever since then, we've been trying to, like, like, Beasley and them been trying to squash me in this, this issue. Why could y'all not really get past that and get back on the That's same That's something time? you gotta ask him, which he's gonna, he's not gonna answer, because he's scared. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, um, Could it be that you are, that you were the last I guess it wasn't the last. Unquote, the, the Listen, when I when I got into the situation, you know, when we formed a partnership, I knew it was us four. And now his focus, his expertise, was the internet, which I thought was a colossal failure when it came to the all round. And I was very adamant about it. I would speak on it. Like you can't call me out and this shit not. You know, like the URL website is piece of shit. It's trash. That's what you were supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was your expertise from what I understood when we first got in. You know what I'm saying? So, to me, like... So, did you ever have, like, a direct conversation? Oh, yeah. Like, yo, what is your problem with me? And did, did he ever oh, yeah, pinpoint yeah, yeah, yeah. any particular thing? <laughs> we was in Orlando, and this is after numerous things this nigga did. Or behind the scenes. And it's my calls, and I seen him face to face. And I went up to him. I said, yo, what's your problem? And then... I caught myself and I said, you know what? I'm gonna be the bigger man. Because for months, probably more than that, maybe like a year or so. Yeah, watch well, hitting this because when you be Oh my fault, my fault, I'm sorry. So for like about a year or so, maybe longer, Beasley and Smack were trying to squash me and Chico's beef behind the scenes. He wouldn't pick up my calls. He wouldn't have a conversation. He wasn't man enough to do it. So I said, all right, when I see him, I'm going to tell him. I seen him, and at this point, I was kind of fed up with it. I went right up to him. I thought to myself, I don't want to go up to him and wild out on him. So 
I say, yo, before I say anything, whatever issue you have with me, whatever you felt like I did to you or anything, I want to apologize. I apologize. I don't know what I'm apologizing for. I don't know what I did to you. But for our partnership, I feel like we were supposed to be brothers. You don't answer my text messages. I've offered you to take you out to dinner for months to have a conversation, and you're not willing to have a conversation. 100% facts. And I said, I'm like, I, and I, I got kind of choked up when I told him. I'm not gonna lie. Because it hurt me. You feel me? And I was like, yo, like, I don't even know what I'm apologizing for, bro. To be honest with you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just trying to move past it. And, um, I did. And he was like, I said, he goes, you know, nah, I was mad because you told me to go fuck off. Go fuck yourself. And I started to laugh. I said, Chico, we've been through biggest shit as a company. And all that. You didn't feel like you could have called me and been a man about the situation if you felt... I was like, you done told me to go fuck myself. Beasley done told me that shit a hundred times. But, because I told you to go fuck yourself, that's why you was mad? I knew it was deeper than that. But I feel like he gave me that answer to, like, pacify the situation. I was being very genuine with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he did a lot of shit. We was in Orlando. And Beasley and Smack called me, and they're like, yo, we're going to need you to do the face-offs. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we, I had done one with T-Top in Harlem, and it was fire. It was good. And Beasley was like, man, ain't nobody can do this shit but you. Like, you the one. Behind the scenes, I guess Chico had this some slime bullshit and talked them out of me doing it. But they never told me that. So I showed up to um, Orlando for volume. I don't know, it was like one of them volumes, one, two, or three. And so I get there, and Matt, my, my little bro, Matt, comes into my room. Now, mind you, I, I booked my own room and everything. Last minute, like, no, don't worry, we got your room. So it was a lot of funny shit going on that I was really upset about. Oh, Chico was in charge of Chico booking was in room. charge of booking the rooms and shit. When I went to L.A., I didn't have a room. I had to share it with fucking Matt. It was just, it was just becoming now, he's sticking it to me behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? And I was getting agitated. This was pretty much one of the last straws. When I get to Orlando, Matt knocks on my door and throws the keys at me. He said, yo, Chico said, um, and he gives me like a schedule, like a paper. And he says, um, you know, you got to pick these guys up at the airport. My nigga, like, the blood just, just like, first of all, I'm with my pregnant wife. I was taking her everywhere with me because she didn't want to be in my crib by herself pregnant like six months. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just weird. She didn't want to. So I said, yo, come to Orlando, we visit family. And my nigga, like, the vessels in my fucking head was popping. And I pretty much was like, don't you go fuck himself. Who the fuck's he thinks he's talking to? You know what I'm saying? I'm not no fucking gopher. I'm not a fucking intern. You're flying all these motherfuckers out. He got the car. That's his job. Let him do it. I got to go do these face-offs. I called Beasley. Beasley's always caught in the middle. I always felt bad for him. Because he's always caught in the middle to defuse the situation. And he gives me this bullshit excuse. Oh, yo, my bad, Norms, you know. Last time Chico was picking people up at the airport, blah, blah, blah. And I'm a team nigga, right? But at the same time, I hold a special talent that I can do more things than everybody else. I can do interviews, I can do different types. They don't do that type of shit. So I'm like, this nigga's trying to play me. And you're going to allow it. When I got there, I was like, yo, my nigga, I don't know who the fuck you think you are. You ain't my boss, none of that shit. We partners, my nigga. Don't ever try to play me, son. And, like, from, it just started escalating from there. Bam, bam, every time. Like, niggas don't understand, like. Tell me about Summer Impact. <laughs> I'll tell you before that, Summer Madness. London. Oh, this nigga's supposed to book my flight. I'm like, bees, where's my info? Chico's the guy that books the flights. Right? Three days before the fucking event, I'm like, yo, where the fuck? Smack on the yo, son. Chico playing himself, bro. My bad, son. I'm about to book your shots. You know what? I'm going to stay back. Because if I'd have went, I'm not going to lie. I was already fed up with this nigga. And he was doing a lot of shit behind the scenes. Like scumbag shit. 
That's why I was in the Summer 7. Fast forward, Summer Impact. I told Beez, I said, yo, bro, because I already know this animosity. I already apologized to this nigga. And he's continuing to do this shit to me. You feel me? Now, people say, like, what did you do to him? I don't fucking know. You feel me? But I done try to reach out to this nigga 150 times. For the team, for the company, for the partnership. And this motherfucker won't answer the phone. Some impact comes. It's fucking raining outside. I tell Beach if I get this, I listen, bro. Because I, I didn't get to get to the venue beforehand. I usually I get to the venue, the other is our partners, is Norm, blah, blah, blah. This is, you know, just make sure he's good. The, the security was tight. It's fine, I don't even. Right? Never have issues bringing people in, right? But I knew, something told me I was going to have an issue. I said, yo, bees, I'm coming with my, me and my man, boom, to some impact. I know the club is tripping. Just let these niggas know I'm on my way. I don't want to wait outside. Lord, they got you. Just hit up KD. Right? Which is Chico assistant or whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't know the title. So, bro, I get to Summer Impact. I got these dope-ass OBJs on. And it's raining. So I get up. I pull to the front. He tells me, call Katie. She going to bring you right in here, man. Because security tight. I said, all right, cool. I call KD. Yo, on my side. Now, mind you, it's fucking raining. So she's like, all right, no, just give me five minutes. I'll be right out. Nigga, I was out there for about... 30 minutes, right? She comes out mad times. She's bringing mad niggas in. I see P wife come in, this nigga cousin, this nigga man. I'm a partner in this situation. Chico's there. You know what I'm saying? The nigga knows I'm outside. Right? Now I'm getting harassed. Fans are coming. So I'm like, fans are like, yo, no, what the fuck you doing out here? I'm like, yo, I'm just fucking with y'all, man. Like, I'm trying to front at this point. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm just out here chilling, man. You feel me? I'm getting hot, man. I had to go in that canopy. I'm seeing her come out and get me. Now, I don't call Beasley because I know I'm losing it. Like, I'm getting mad, right? So, Chris, Smack pull up with like 15 people, right? Smack going, right? No, but for Smack in, I said, you know what? Smack my partner, right? I'm about to pull this nigga Chico car. Because now I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I pull up. I throw the fucking gate open, right? And I'm walking, and they're like, what are you doing, what are you doing? And I'm looking at her like, yo. Who, who's saying that? KD comes up to me, with the band. Now mind you, I've been standing out there for an hour and a fucking half, dog. Now you got my band, right? I'm mad, she goes out there, like a big nerd, you feel me? So I'm like, yo, just give my man my band, let's go in. Now they telling me my man can't come in with me. I'm a partner in the company. This nigga wife came in. Everybody coming in. They let Kayshawn homeboy in, bro. But you can't get your man. I can't get me and my man. Right? Now, I'm sitting there. And Chico right there. Now, mind you, this is the crazy that nobody knows. I start barking on Chico. I'm talking past her. And I'm like, yo, I don't even, why the fuck is she talking to me? Like, that's what I'm saying. I'm flipping. My man's grabbing me. I'm like, dog. Just give me, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not fucking leaving my man outside. Like, who the fuck are you talking to? I'm wilding right now. I start barking on Chico. He's like, you can come in, but you man. And I'm like, dog. And he's like, and he started to tell me, but who else is coming in? It's only staff. And I'm like, yo, this nigga wife just came in, bro. This mad nigga just came in. Bruce just walked in. Like, he's trying to pacify me. Bro, the cops come. You think that this motherfucker, right? would be like, yo, no, no, the lady threatens to kick me off the premise and arrest me. My own partner is standing there like this. When somebody really wants to rectify a situation, they'll go out their way and do it. But if you, like, Chris, me and you got an issue. Me and you had an issue at one time. We spoke, we never had an issue after that, right? If, if, if I'm going to continue to come at you about an issue, or at least to find out what it is, and you're ignoring it, you want the issue to keep going, right? You ain't trying to fix the issue. You trying to, and that's what I said. I started seeing like, now I'm getting phased out. I'm not doing the, the um, you know, like 
the interviews or I'm not doing promos and I'm purposely getting phased out at these volumes. And I'm sitting there like, damn, like now it's all about, you know, this dude. It's all about him. It's all about Beasley. Like Beasley would never get on camera. All of a sudden now it's Beasley on camera. And Beasley don't, if you ever watch Beasley interview, he's not comfortable. That's what I did. You know what I'm saying? They didn't want to be in front of the camera. And like, it was almost a situation like, yo, we got to phase him out. And I know Chico had a lot to do with that shit. Like, it is what it is. Like, it is. Welcome. Heading 14, heading 14, heading 14, heading 14, heading 14. Champion contender. Oh, here we go. Okay. I got special guests in the house. You know how he look, but you don't know how he look. He's a very important piece of the structure and the foundation of new talent. A lot of the new rising stars you see, he's had a hand in it. You see what I'm saying? A lot of footage that's supposed to be passed around, he done saw it. That's a fact. A big part in creating these, you know, these band situations, these born leggy situations. It's not Debo, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously not. Damn, I was about to say that was that, that <laughs> was him. It's P. Give it up for P, man. Come on, one good time. All right, let's talk about P from the War Report. You brought P in um, basically to help you with the uh, radio show that you was doing, and I feel like he's kind of taken over, I guess, what, you, what your former role was within the URL. Um, let's talk about you first bringing in P in and how that happened. I'm going to create the War Report, and I'm going to go even with all of you guys. We're going to split it three ways, which I didn't have to do because I was the name. But I felt like in good faith, even though you don't have no experience in the situation, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was kind of like the new situation in a sense, like. But uh, you know, he was um, you know, smart. You know, he gave me a lot of ideas, helped me put up the show, uh, and I, I kept expanding his role. And you know, he's a he's a go-getter type of individual. How did y'all relationship turn? Because um, to be honest with you, I kind of feel like you kind of hired what eventually turned into like your replacement. How, how did y'all relationship change from you bringing him on to him being, had this expanded role? Because Pete used to tell me he's sitting in conference calls and all this kind of stuff. Like that's a pretty established role. Listen, for whatever, that was again, doing whatever, for. whatever um, relationship he, remember me and, I ain't fuck with Chico. Um, but he understands $40 a pound, he's divide and conquer, you know what I'm saying? And he knew because we were close. That me and Chico didn't have a relationship. Like a lot of people didn't know behind the scenes. Me and Chico did not get along. So I guess he got in where he fit in, and that became Chico's kind of like personal assistant in a sense. But he was still working with me. We we kind of stopped communicating a lot. He was always talking to, to Chico, Chico, and again, me and Chico don't vibe. So I don't know what conversations they had, which I can almost guarantee it wasn't pleasant and um he felt away and you know during that break that i was taking he was doing things that i asked him not to do i was like yo don't do no pgs unless you know we agree and he would put out the card and i'd be like yo dog what are you doing like, that's not cool like how are you going over my head in a situation so i took it offensive so it started becoming some some petty shit and a lot of people started saying, oh, it's a power struggle. And I'm like, there ain't no power struggle. Like, I don't feel no, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm a partner in the situation. I don't give a fuck. Like, people had to understand, like, I didn't really give a fuck about people viewing me as a scout because I knew that wasn't what I was. This is what I didn't sign up for. You know what I'm saying? I just did a really good job. And that kind of, like, separated what people, in people's eyes, the PGs. Because he was going out his way to establish himself, which anybody in business... If there's a dog up there, you want to try to knock him out. And um, he was just doing some shit that I wasn't appreciative of. Uh, and like the rappers would come to you like, yo, he asked me not to do the battle at Born Legacy. And I'm like, why would he do that? So we had multiple conversations together. Now, again, in terms of the conversations with Chico and him, me and Chico didn't speak. So whatever conferences me and Smack had, it was me, Smack, and Beasley. Chico's not, Chico don't fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? So that's what people don't understand. Like me and that man did not rock. And he did not like the fact that I was a partner. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't like the fact he couldn't tell me what to do. Because I'm not no motherfucking employee. You feel me? 
So imagine, you could tell that nigga what to do. But you finna, you're not gonna do that to me. You know what I'm saying? So, like a lot of times what would happen is Chico would call Beasley to cry. So then Beasley would come to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, yo, Chico feel like you couldn't have said this. You shouldn't have said this. You know, you're a part of the situation. It looks crazy. And I'm just like, why the fuck he ain't calling me? So do you feel like like P's relationship with Chico was allowing or making him feel like he could get stuff absolutely, 100%. over you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, it's cool. But it's just, it's just like I said, he understands how, to, like, he's, he's good at manipulating. And that's what he did. And, you know, you got to take your hat off to him. Like, he going to do interviews and be like, <laughs> sure, you just make me laugh. I'll see, like, an interview where he'll be like, yo, I got to get shot out the doors, man. Without him, I wouldn't be here. And I sit there like, nigga, you don't want to say that shit. You want to say, fuck that nigga. Norbs got Norbs at all podcasts. Yeah. Shout out to Norbs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to be fake and be like, yeah, shout out to Pete. I don't fuck with you, nigga. You feel me? Like, just be real about it. But he's very excellent at painting a picture that's not, you know what I'm saying? So you you felt like P was calling artists and, and talking behind your back and, and, and talking to Chico behind your back. I mean, you it's feel, not like I felt like it. I knew it. Like, it was cool. Like, you know? You are real. Um, what we call with Quentin Ray? Maybe I gotta see. I know uh, Noah's wanted me to do something in January too. But I don't know when, but I'm gonna ask him because he wasn't sure. But I, I, I definitely take that battle up. Just let me make sure with him real quick. I can tell you this. Ain't nothing going on. Ain't nothing going on. I can tell you that. Uh, Noah's ain't got shit in January. Definitely a difference. Okay, so you did, yeah, that's that's the reason it's different. You know? Um uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. But um so I, I I know everything we're doing. I know everything that's going on, I know what we're doing. You know? Um now this is the thing. I know everything we're doing. He's not on his calls. He knows what he would like to do. When you when you look at bringing new new nails and PN, do you feel like betrayed by them in, in, in some type of way, or how do you feel seeing them still a part of URL and you no longer a part of URL? Um, if I look at it on a personal level, do I feel betrayed? I feel like he's grimy, but he was grimy with a goal. I should have recognized that shit a long time ago and moved on. So, in retrospect. I feel like things happen for a reason, and P was part of my story. Do I regret helping him? Sometimes I think about it like that. But at the same time, he helped me get out of a situation that I wasn't really happy without even doing it consciously, you know what I'm saying? Um, but will we be having tea and, and crumpets? No. Would I, would, in my next venture, would I ask for services? Absolutely not. Because I feel like the loyalty wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? And I hope he doesn't think that they have his loyalty and interest, you know what I'm saying? What's poppin', it's your boy Schmidt you know what I'm saying? Real quick, man, I just wanted to do this blog to update everybody with, you know what I'm saying? 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 Forward, you know what I'm saying? 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 I just hate, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We performing, you know what I'm saying? This is an art form, and you know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be professional, like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't think, you know what I'm saying? 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 You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Smack me at a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of money, and I think that's why I really take offense when people say shit about Smack or open up around like, yo, fuck Smack. Like, hit me a holler, like, I love Hitman, man. Like, that's really my yeah. little brother. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes family fights, man. So, my whole thing is like, when he said what he said about Smack 
again, you can't talk about my big homie. Like you really can't. That's my that's my that's my big brother. I love him. Like Smack is the godfather of this shit. If anybody presents an award not named Smack, this shit's gonna be corny. And I'm not just saying that because that's my big bro, but like, come on, my nigga, like, yeah. he's that guy. I always felt every interview that I ever saw you speak of Smack, it was always so glowingly. And yeah. I love you Smack. know, I went back to YouTube. I tried to do a lot of search, and I couldn't find many interviews where he showed me love, yeah. where he openly thanked you or showed you love. Or I mean, I remember an interview where you were actually interviewing him after the event, and. You know, you're interviewing him, he's talking about the event and how it was a success and this was my I favorite mean, battle and it. But he never was like, you know what, Norbs, I appreciate you, you know, being a part of this or whatever the case may be. Do you feel, when you were in the moment, were you seeing this too or are you just you, so you know, in it that you don't see it? You ever seen, uh, you know when they say, like a woman's battered and why do you keep taking it? If you, everybody sees it but the woman? Hey, come, come on. 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 It's kind of like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got it from a lot of people, like, yo, this nigga's not really fucking with you, showing you love like that. And I would be like, nah, man, I love him. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love him. Like, that's my brother, I'm going to the end with him. We're going to get rich together, we're going to do this. So that was always my mentality. And I chose not to see it. You know what I'm saying? Looking back on it now, and what you said, it, it, I did the same thing once. And I was like, damn, son, like, it was almost like a jealousy. And I started realizing over the years that they felt as if, you no, know, it was like, you're kind of outshining them. People are giving you a lot of credit, whatever. And I remember one time in Times Square, we was, uh, we was somewhere in the fucking city, and Smack's like, yo, Shan. And people recognized me out there. And I'm like, yeah, you know, Smack, it is what it is. We popping. He's like, yo, let's go outside. Let's see who gets more people to come up to him and take pictures. And it kind of showed me a lot about his um, character. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, and I kind of took it like, okay, this nigga feels like he needs to get more praise, in a sense, to, to push. And that's why I kind of was like, you know what? I'm going to fall back a little bit, do what I do, and make it to where he gets the respect he deserves. Like, I was kind of sacrificing myself for him in a sense because he was smack you know what I'm saying and um I felt like some people in the organization my partners felt like I was getting way too much light you know what I'm saying and um I did that purposely man like it was one of the things where I didn't mind playing Pippin and saying he's Michael you know what I'm saying or being Kobe and saying he's Shaq but nah, Smack is, yo, he, that's my that's my big bro. He's almost like a father figure to me, to be honest with you. So like, and, and that's what a lot of people see, man. That's why I said some man, if Smack ain't walking out on that stage, bro, it's not, it's not a real battle, bro. It's a difference when that nigga walk out, man. I ain't mind it because when I tell you I had a love for Smack, a genuine love. You no, know, when did you start to feel like, damn, he really ain't rocking with me like I rock with him? Um, at events and stuff like that, I would just see it. Like, it would just be very um, vague, what's up? Oh, all right, cool, well, you know, fam. Oh, yeah, they could, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And uh, we had this conversation. When you say stuff like, how's your fam? It's almost like y'all yeah. ain't spoke in a while. Did y'all not, like, talk I, I tell you this, between when, events and stuff? And I mean, we not, you know what's funny? We would talk. But, like, it was a self-operating machine. So, like, it was usually, like, me and B's, she going to be in a smack beater. But, like, he didn't really have a knowledge of it. And I was pretty much the architect and, and understand and me and Beasley me and Beasley if we had text messages for the last 11 years we probably had millions so to answer your question towards when we started getting really more popular I felt like the ego started going a little more after UFF things of that nature that's when things started changing but like we never hung out like it was business it was a strictly business relationship but I had love for them you know what I'm saying and that's what sometimes people confuse business and love you feel me and um you know, in terms of of that, that's what our separation was. And a matter of fact, when we did body, right? We did body. I really felt like he felt threatened. It was weird. So we get to do body, the movie. Shout out to Disaster and and um, Joseph Kahn. They cast me for the movie. So I said, right, cool. I get. Uh, they send me whatever. They end up hitting smack. They said, listen, these are your lines for the movie, right? I said, all right, cool. So I'm kind of nervous. My first film. 
I show up to the fucking, um, to the spot, and my lines have changed. And I'm like, yo, why the fuck only Smack got lines now? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was weird. But I, I was like, whatever, I don't give a fuck. It's Smack. That's my big homie. This is my brother. I don't give a fuck. I wasn't thinking that somebody went behind my back and switched shit. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Whatever. I said, fuck it. We on set. Charlemagne's in the room with us. And, um, you know, Charlemagne's kind of distant. If you don't really know nobody. And, you know, Smack likes to be acknowledged. If you know Smack, he likes center. He likes to niggas be like, oh, my God, it's Smack. Let me touch your beard. That's Smack. You know what I'm saying? So he's in there with this, uh, I don't know the guy's name. Uh, po uh, spoke, not spoken reason. Uh, he's like a political figure in L.A. I forgot the guy's fucking name. And Smack's talking to him. And um, King Lopes is there. Now, I've had a conversation with King Lopes on the phone. Right? So I'm sitting there. I'm standing there. And you know, like, if me and you were together, you're my man. And somebody come to talk to me, I'm like, yo, this is my man. Like, out of respect. Right? Mind you, we all chatting over there. Smack's talking to the dude. What the fuck is it? Brother Polite. Right? King Lopes. Doesn't even turn to say, yo, this is my partner. This is my, this is Norris, whatever. And I'm sitting there. Bro, and the fucking retire like, and again, these are your friends. These are not my friends. And I felt like, yo, this nigga didn't even acknowledge me. And it was weird. Like, you feel me? I, like, looking back on it, I was like, damn, my nigga, like, okay. Other polite don't acknowledge me. King Lose don't even say nothing to me, which was weird. Maybe he didn't recognize me. I doubt it. He didn't say anything to me. It was weird. And smacked and introduced me to Brother Polite. It's all right. We do the fucking thing. He does the lines. We had like a fucking 50 takes at fucking 3 in the morning. Or 5 and 5.30 in the morning. We leave. That point there is where I felt like this nigga's moving funny. Like, he didn't even acknowledge me. Like, Chris, if we're, we're together, I don't give a fuck if Shaquille O'Neal's here. If fucking Alan Iverson's here. And Shaq starts talking to me and you're just standing there. I'm like, Shaq, this is Chris. This is my boy. He didn't even acknowledge me. And that's when I was like, he feels threatened. But I was like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm reading into it too much. And um, after that, I just really started peeping it. I started seeing it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, when we did 106 in Park, right? It was me and Smack. We watched it the whole time. The producers knew. We're partners. These guys are scared to be on camera. It's just me and Smack. It was, it was a spot for Smack, Bow Wow, and me the entire time over there. The producers had it X'd out. Norb, Smack, and Bow Wow, right? When he shot the shit for, for Netflix, I didn't even get a call. I found out after they shot it. Beans is going first. We're going to get into it, so let's get it. DJ Head. And I was just like, hmm, it's weird. That's interesting. And I was like, yo, why didn't I get a call? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No problem. So Floyd Mayweather shit was mad funny. This is, this nigga Smack would do some funny shit, bro. So we're going to Vegas for Summer Madness, right? So Beasley's like, yo, bro, we're coming up with ideas for something, man. And again, I don't talk to this prick, Gene, French, right? Chico, for those y'all that don't know. I call him jerk off. So you guys want to call me, they call him. So um, I don't talk to this prick. So he goes, yo, like, we're looking for a place to do whatever. I go, yo, it's Vegas. It's fucking use Floyd's gym. He's like, yo, you think you get it? I was like, I don't know. So I, I call my bro. Um, SL 500. That's what I always known him as. I knew him for about 12 years. And I said, yo, you still with Floyd? and shit like that. Do me a And Floyd happened to be with him. So I said, um, I said, yo, bro, yo, you think you, we could, uh, you could ask Floyd if we could get the gym? Get so he said, yo, I'm with Floyd right now. I'm asking him. So he tells Floyd, he said, yo, Floyd, this nigga Norbs, they're doing the smack event out there. They want to know if they can use the gym. So Floyd was like, Nigga for no battles, hell no. These niggas, so Floyd, he was like, nah, nah, for face offs and shit like that. He tries to face offs. So Floyd was like, yeah. Now, mind you, nobody talks to Floyd, bro. Floyd is the fucking president. So he's like, yo, Floyd said it's cool. I said, word. So, boom, I called B. He said, yo, B's. Floyd said, yeah. He said, fuck out of here. I said, yeah, nigga. He said, yeah. Like, dead ass. I said, yeah, I just got on the phone with them niggas. <laughs> so, B's, he's harassing me to get the Wi Fi shit and all that. Whatever. We finally get it in. Boom, we get we get everything. Tech Nine is there. Uh, these mad hype, he's a Mayweather fan. He's like, yo, whatever. Everybody's hyped there in the gym. So 
the day before, the nigga, um, the nigga hits me. That's up. He said, hey, man, Floyd coming. I said, what? He said, yeah, nigga, Floyd said he's going to come through. Show love. I was like, nigga, stop playing. He goes, yo, I'm not making no promises. But Floyd said he flying in. For, nigga flew in from Miami to Vegas to come fuck with us. Smack never had a conversation with this nigga, right? Beasley, nobody. Floyd comes and Floyd, you know, Floyd busy nigga. Floyd was like, yo, no cameras, no pictures, nothing. So I don't gonna bother Floyd. So I like, yo, bro, tell that nigga if I get a picture, because I'm a big fan. I ain't wanna see him with groupie. So Floyd says, I gotta go. Tell them niggas to put Rex to battle, because I can't see Rex and Reed. Rex Reed battle, Floyd about to leave. These niggas go on, grab, smack. Right? Mind you, my nigga. <laughs> I invited this nigga. I got him in everything. Smack going in front of the camera. He's like, yeah, Shane, you know, I had to reach out to my brother Floyd Mayweather. And I'm sitting there like, oh, what's Yo, up? And we out here, man. First, that's the first thing I want to talk to you about. How the hell big did this happen, man? We doing the face off oh, in Floyd Mayweather's gym, bro. Yeah, man, you know. You know, legends respect legends at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You know, Floyd a legend, I'm a legend, you know, um, it's only right I check in, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the city, I gotta check in. And then, you know, you know, he just embraced with open arms, it's like, yo, you know what I mean? You know, come use the facility or whatever, so, you know, it's all good, you know what I'm saying? Definitely took him up on that offer and, um, we here, you know what I mean? We doing a face-off, we doing a face-off at, at the Mayweather gym. Floyd ain't had no motherfucking conversation with this nigga. Now again, I'm trying to check my ego at this point, but nigga, you didn't reach out to him, but you made it look like the nigga came for you and didn't even, you know, hey man, this nigga Norbs hollered at the nigga, and I'm sitting there like, and that's why I said like, piece, shit started piecing together like, yo, this nigga really trying to take all the credit, and I even spoke, matter of fact, I had Beasley on the interview, and I said, yo, Bees, who bring Floyd to the, to the venue? He didn't want to say it. Like I said, yo, who brought it? He's like, it was you, Norris. It was you. And I'm like, but I did that shit. Like, people are like, yo, that's mad petty. But it just showed mentality. You know, legends respect legends at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? You know, Floyd legend. I'm a legend. You know, um, it's only right. I check in. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the city. You know what I'm saying? It was more shit. Like, it's crazy. Like, people don't realize, like, before King of the Dot got the deal with Twitch, Twitch came to me. You know what I'm saying? They came right to me. Right? And they're like, hey Norris, can we have a conversation? You and the partners. I said, alright, cool. Me Beasley. Immediately. I'm like, yo, Twitch, yo, this do the one over. I'm not gonna say the person's name from Twitch. I had a meeting. But it was just like, I'm coming to y'all as my partner. Like, look, this is what we got going on, we're gonna eat. But it wasn't the same respect. So it was just weird, man. When I had my my daughter, right? When I had a baby shower, I invited Smack. He never responded. Beasley responded for him. And this is when, like, what? Give me a time frame. 2016. 2016. Okay. 2016 going to 2000. My daughter was born. No, no, I'm bullshitting. My daughter was born in 2018. So 2017. So I was like, yo, my baby shower. He never really responded. And again, this is after the body shit and all that stuff. I already started feeling away with him. Not away. I didn't feel nothing. I was like, yo, fuck it. He don't fuck me. He don't fuck me. It's business. We just keep it going. But I started to love for him. Beasley shows up to my baby shower and he makes an excuse for, for Smack. Of course she's gonna show up. She grates my fucking guts. Um, and um, me and Beasley just like, yo, bro, like I would talk to Beasley. Let, let me, let me, like, and this is this is like an emotional thing for me in this part because Beasley was really my brother. Like, bro, me and Beasley used to talk about on my face. Nah, for when you get emotional. Me and B, shut up, nigga. <laughs> um, Beasley is, is um, we were like brothers, bro. Like, we would laugh, talk, like, bro, I would, it would be very rare that me and Beasley went a day without talking. He would FaceTime me with his daughter. His daughter would call me uncle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have, a little, I have my daughter. You know, this is, look at, his uncle Beasley. He would, you know, send stuff for my daughter. Like, our relationship was different than Smacks and mine. Like, it was... You know, bro, like, everything, like, millions of text messages, millions of conversations, like, I genuinely love Beasley, you know what I'm saying? 
So throughout the situation, that's probably the hardest situation, not being able to call somebody that I really considered my brother. Or to text him and be like, damn, Beasley, I'm really feeling a way about this. Like, Beasley was really the medium between all of us. And I always said it. I, was, I felt Beasley was the hardest situation. I felt, now I feel betrayed by Beasley. Because we always knew if we were ever to separate, we would have to all eat. You know what I'm saying? Equally. Because we built this together. And to, to, to see him go back on that, you know what I'm saying? It's very hurtful. Knowing you know my situations. You know I'm saying you know I got uh, two kids. You know what I'm saying? You know I got my daughter, my son. You know we built this together. You know the conversations we've had. We know everything about each other. You know what I'm saying? You know everything I've done. There's no way that you can't sit there and value what I've done or acknowledge the fact that we've been partners. You recently moved out of New York to Atlanta. Do you feel like the move hurt anything as far as y'all pro no, proximity no, no, to each other and able no. to see each other and pull up? Nope. No. no, because throughout the years, I wouldn't, bro, I've never been to Smack's house. I've never been, like me and Chico didn't hang out. We wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you never been to Smack house? Never been to Smack house, no. You know, like you don't know where he lived type shit? Like you never you like. You know I found out Smack's address when I had to serve him the papers. Wow. That's crazy. I've been to Beasley's house numerous times. Beasley's Shit, I've been I've been to Beasley house. Everybody been to Beasley's house. <laughs> Beasley's like the his house is like a fucking hotel. Yeah, he got a, <laughs> wow, that's crazy, man. Yeah, like I said, like people mistaken like certain things. Like I said, like when me and Smack was more business, I did have a different love for him, obviously that he didn't have for me. So when he said that shit in that interview, I'd actually seen that interview and it, it angered me. It angered me. Because you're doing this for the fans now. You're full of shit is what you actually are. And you're doing it for uh, public perception that, oh, no, nah, because people are asking questions, you know what I'm saying? And again, out of respect for them, right, I kept it quiet. But you've noticed since I served them, which was known when that last uh, interview happened, they haven't mentioned me. Nobody in the staff mentioned me, nothing. Because it's a situation now. It wasn't that I was mad, but I was really hurt behind that shit. I wasn't, I was never really upset. I was really hurt. That shit's fucked up, my nigga. You did some fucked up shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you supposed to be my homie, and you messaging my baby mom, asking her for new pictures and, and all this kind of shit. Well, you been a slime ball norbs and trying to smash twerk baby mama? I was being a, I was, listen, I accept my faults in the situation, like, like I said, like, I apologized before and all that. But again, it takes two to tango. And I was just like, when that shit happened, whatever, I accepted what I did. And like I said, I'm not mad at that he got mad or whatnot, even though to me it wasn't that crazy. But whatever, I accepted. I wasn't right in the situation. But I also wasn't the only person that was wrong in the situation. Take me to y'all altercation when y'all when you when you show up at the venue. Um, is there a conversation between you and Twerk? No, before, like before people, altercation people happened? like people like yo, why didn't you do this? And I'm sitting there like, nigga, like I, like pretty much. I was interviewing Rum Nitty, interviewing him, whatever. I'm interviewing him about Cassidy and uh, Casita, and. Like, I got my back turned. Like, I'm interviewing, like, how you looking at me? But there's, there's, I'm looking this way. So, like, there's nobody there. And, um, like, I look to the right, and I see, like, I see Twerk, but, like, I see him from a distance. And, like, when I seen him, it was almost like I caught him doing something. Like, he stopped what he was doing. And I was just like, I don't know what these niggas going on. And so I get into the interview, and I got my hoodie on just like this, actually, ironically. And, um, I got my head down. And then I just hit, you bitch ass nigga, and I get hit, like from the side. Now it's crazy, I'm only, I'm focused like on, on, on Nitty. So when I get hit, I'm off balance. And then I just feel something just on top of me, boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't even got my balance, so, like again, I never really watched this shit, but when I, I watched a little bit of it, so when I, like I guess it takes place when I'm getting flipped over. 
but at that point, I already got hit like six, seven times. And I'm getting, so when I fall, I land on my right side. So at that point, I was when I lost like, what, 60 pounds, so I was weighing about 350, right? And then I guess he landed on me. And that's when I realized who it was, in a sense. And I'm trying to get up, I couldn't really get up. And I didn't realize like, you know, when, when you get hit, your adrenaline is pumping. So when I finally, like, I'm saying like, yo, you wanna fight, Just let me get up, let's get it in. That's what I keep saying. I'm getting kicked, all type of shit. But I don't really feel anything because my adrenaline. So after he like walked off, he's like, ah, whatever. I try to get up, and when I get up, I'm like, I'm in like. So y'all have that altercation, pain. and he just walks off. Yeah, he bounces, he leaves. So at this point, who's around? And like, is this like the end of the event? No, Cassie? this is this is like the middle. Like everybody there, nobody even try to like separate us to let us fight or nothing. Okay. But again, none of these niggas owe me shit. But I think they do. At least separate us, let us fight. So I get up. And I get up and I'm holding my ribs. And I'm just like, yo, I think my shit just broke. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yeah, my ribs just broke. Like, I'm in, I can't lift my, like, my right arm. So, whenever Beasley come, and Beasley like, yo, yo, you good? And I'm looking at him like. <laughs> Beasley asked, was you good? <laughs> nigga, I just got my ass whooped. Nigga, what the fuck are you talking about good? So, like, I'm like, yo, let me go, like, like let me go to the bathroom. Let me look at myself. So I go in there and I'm just like, oh, I can't lift my arm. Like, I'm like, I like, at this point, I'm just like, yo, like, something's broken. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, I'm mad as fuck right now. But I know I can't move. So I tell B's, like, I'm like, yo, sh set the fair one up, whatever. But nigga, I can't, this is gonna kill me. I got one arm at this point. You know what I'm saying? So I said, you know what? Let me go home. Let me get right. And at this point, like, Beasley's like, yo, don't worry about it. I got the footage. I'm not going to drop it. I'm going to make sure it don't leak, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to handle this like men. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like At this point, I'm like, I'm going to end up getting a fair yeah, one. Now, when, when he says this, you you actually know that it was being recorded? Yeah, I seen it. But okay. I, I don't give a fuck who recorded shit. So he when he seen this shit, he's like, yo, I know we got the footage. I'm not going to let it out. Whatever. So I leave the crib. I might leave. I take a cab to my crib. I wake up to the footage. First thought in my head was, didn't this motherfucker say that? I said, all right. So this nigga want to put it out. So in my head, I'm not even thinking in my head like, so like, do you know that drugs recorded it at this time, or you don't? You just yeah. know it's no, no. I knew, no, I knew. Oh, you knew, okay. But I know that's his boyfriend, so I ain't really care. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm not, whatever. I'm like, in my head, I'm like. If you a street dude, right, and you do something to somebody, right, you expecting it back because it's not the streets. So when the shit got out, I was like, oh, this nigga don't want retaliation. Because when you put, like, if some if an incident happens, right, and the shit gets out, right, now you're telling. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if something was to happen in New Jersey Detroit the next day, who's the prime suspect? Me. At this point, I'm not even thinking about that shit. Like I'm, like emotionally, I'm, I'm you embarrassed. At this point, you still want to shoot a fade. At this point, I didn't want to shoot a fade. I wanted to shoot him. <laughs> like, I'm not even lying to you. Like I'm gonna keep it real. Just like I wasn't even thinking fade at this point. Like you understand? Like it's just psychologically at this point. I'm like, nah. I'm not letting this shit rock. Did you hit Beasley up? Like why the fuck the footage drop? Like no, I never asked Beasley about it because at the end of the day, you told me. That she was gonna get it and the shit wasn't gonna drop. So I was like, you know what? I'll just fight the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my question is this: So a signed artist drops the fight. Like, it's a whole lot. Like, I really feel like this is what I'm saying. It, it really almost felt like they wanted this shit to come out. To be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to make allegations, but if you know who got the shit, you know what I'm saying? So at this point, like, I'm just bugging out. Like mentally, I'm bugging out in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna kill this nigga. I know where hotel he's at, whatever. You know, I don't really want to get into the, the darkness, but I was in a dark place. And people were calling me, like, yo, what you want to do? And I'm just like, don't worry about it, I got it. I don't want to put, I don't want to incriminate anybody else, right? And they're like, yo, son, we're going to head to the venue, we're going to do it. And I'm like, nah, I don't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? 
because he put it out. Where the fuck you think it's gonna go to? It's gonna go to me. So if this nigga trips and bumps his head, he already told. You know what I'm saying? Like the nigga told. Like, what do I do at this point, Chris? So in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna do it on my own. And so this is the day before the battle, right? This is the day of the battle. No, I mean y'all fought the day before the battle. I got attacked. Yeah. The day before the battle, February twenty seventh. So you was basically blindsided. Basically. No, I was blindsided. It wasn't okay. basically. So the next day, did they tell you don't show up to the venue? No, the they didn't say twerk shit. Ended up battling. Yeah. Bitchy that day. Yeah. So in my head, I'm like, whatever. My wife talked me out of the shit, and I mean, she's like, you know what? We'll work through whatever. Don't lose your freedom over this. And like, you know, a couple influential people had called me and was like, yo, bro, suckers do what suckers do. And I, you know, whatever. I had to swallow my pride because I knew if I did something, I'm going to jail, period. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't a situation that nobody knew about. Hold on, let me ask you this. When did you know what it was that you were even attacked about? Did, did you know, well, why, no, no, I knew know one, why he one, was even attacked? No, no, once, once he, because he was talking about it while he was whooping my ass. Get the fuck up. What the fuck are you doing? Bitch ass nigga. Let me get up. You think I see you hit my baby mom, nigga? Get it, nigga. Huh, nigga? You gonna lie? You gonna lie, you piece of shit? Yo, let me get up, nigga. Suck a dick. Yo, what the fuck the fuck up? I'm not saying he was wrong for being mad. You know what I'm saying? I was wrong for the part I played in the situation. So did you not go to the venue the next day? Did you you didn't even I didn't go to the venue because if I'd have went to the venue, I you know, in my Mental, it wasn't gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? How is it possible that, or from your knowledge, how is it possible that you don't make any money off of Summer Madness too? From what I, from my understanding was, the investor that put up the money got his money back, and it was more about building the brand at this point. This is what I was told, like you know what I'm saying. And again, like I believed it because I don't believe someone that I genuinely love, and I thought love, you know, thinks love feels the same about me, would lie to me. So again, I don't know. I believed them because some man is too. We actually, I remember me and Smack walking out of some man is too, right? And me and Smack looking at each other. And I remember this shit because it hurt me to hear him say this shit. And he was like, man, Sean, like, because I'm like, yo, we made any brand, nigga? Like, because some man is too, you thinking, bro, this shit was wall to wall. Lloyd Banks couldn't get in. Nobody could get in. Shit's sold out. But we ain't walking with no money. So I, so I was told. But I, I believed Smack and some man is too because he really was like, he really pulled the shit out of his pocket. Like, yo, Sean, this is bullshit, Sean. And he was kind of like, the investor took all the bread and then he left us with nothing. You feel me? So I felt Smack's pain because I was like, damn, for real? Like, so we, I was like, yo, bro, we eat together, we starve together. That's how I looked at it. And that's why some of the minus three was affected by some of the minus two. And so, that's. So how, how, much, how much of a role did Harry play? So, like, you got to remember too, some of the minus three was. We ain't really had no bread. Like we had whatever sponsors we had. So if you look at the card, we had to scale it down for some man is two because some man is two was Moot, Solomon, Jones, Clips. You know what I'm saying? It was everybody. And then we went to what? So we took a giant step backwards, and it was mostly because of financial. Like these guys were charges. We couldn't get Moot back. And Lux just had a performance of his life. You think Lux wants a battle for? I think we gave him like anywhere from four to seven thousand to battle Calico. You think Lux is gonna sit back and be like, "Yo, yeah, give me that back"? No, Lux wants because two people don't realize is whoever leaked what Mook got. I think it was Mook. Mook said he got twenty five thousand for battle, right? If I'm not mistaken. Lux has had the biggest performance at that point in battle rap history. You think we was gonna be able to book, book Lux? I and mean, if you don't, if you recall too, Lux and Hollow was the next battle because Hollow was the next star. We couldn't afford that. We was trying to. I, I negotiated with Hollow many a times with that situation. I tried to get it, you know. I had conversations with Hollow outside my crib. And I had to tell him, like, yo, if they're going to give you that money, UW, go get it. Because we clearly can't get it for you. 
So that's what I'm saying. Like people didn't really understand financially. We didn't have that backing. So when Harry came into the picture, you know, Harry is a legit millionaire. You know, and and now you 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 equal our vision, right? I I can see certain things. I'm I'm great at what I do. Beasley's great at what he does. You know, Smack is is now becoming kind of like a a little star. You know. And now you equate that with money behind us? You can't stop us. I feel like Harry should have been an equal partner with all of us. I always felt that way. So basically DNA brought Harry in. Yeah. Right? And Harry didn't want to keep losing money, so DNA convinced him to come over to uh, URL and they worked on an agreement. Again, Beasley's the business guy. We always looked at it like that, so I always trusted in Beasley. Oh, what's the situation with Harry? All right, cool. I don't need to know anymore. You know what I'm saying? But, I, you know, Harry was family. Harry came to my birthday party. He was there when I met my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, Harry to me was family. But I would never, you know, I, I just wasn't the guy to ask Harry for money. Because I knew Harry was putting up thousands. Now, you say influence. The reason we started doing pay-per-views and the fans should thank is because of Harry. Because Harry was tired of losing money. And Harry came in and said, no, if you want this money, we're going to do pay-per-view. It's 100% facts. So when you want to talk influence, absolutely. Harry was the reason we did pay-per-view. And a lot of people don't know that. And a lot of people want to downplay Harry or, or not, not big him up for what he's done. You can give a nigga a thank you shout out. Oh yeah, no, he's not a sponsor, bro. A sponsor wants that money. You know what I'm saying? Like, sponsors, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't really gain nothing out of the situation. And, um, you know, Harry was was... Was 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 very influential in, in getting the pay-per-views. He owns WatchBattleLive.com. That's his shit. He created it. He went and bought the service. He did all of that shit. It wasn't Smack. It's the facts. You know what I'm saying? So when people think about Battle Rap and they talk about the Mount Rushmore, you better put that Indian motherfucker there. Because he is probably the most, or one of the most important pieces in Battle Rap. And a lot of people may know about it behind the scenes, or but they never speak on it, and it's the truth. Harry is a beautiful person, bro. Is he one of the reasons why y'all phased out of out of YouTube and started moving on to a URL? Um, no, I mean, that was more of a business decision. Um, it's, it was kind of smart and kind of dumb at the same time. Like, YouTube wasn't paying. So what do you do? You monopolize the content by having everything there. So now you control people coming to your, you, you know, you think. So YouTube, basically, everybody posts up there, right? So they're able to get advertisers. So in thought, if you're able to keep your content under your own, you know, uh, video, whatever the shit, you brought everybody there and you can get advertisers, subscriptions and things of that nature. So Harry had nothing to do with it. He paid for it, but he didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't about YouTube. Oh, he paid for the URL. Yeah. You, you know, Harry was pretty much um, funding the events. Pretty much funding them. I mean, what didn't he fund? <laughs> like you really gotta think about it. Cassidy, Harry paid him. Lux, Harry paid him. Mook. Man, like it's a mentality, bro. Like, are we really grateful for this individual? Or are we taking advantage? So, so of give me a rough estimate. So he came in around 2013, 14. So I'm just say fast man. forward. Uh, he's been around about five, six years. Six years. Harry's really. So we talking about millions of dollars yeah. put into the URL? Yeah, 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 bro. Like, like. People didn't realize, like, you know, me and Harry didn't speak all the time. But when we did, it was genuine. And, you know, I knew. Like, I've had conversations with Harry. But when you're a team individual, you don't put that stuff out there. When you're a partner in a situation, you don't put that stuff out there. I always felt bad for Harry. Why do you feel like he's stuck in it so long? I feel like Harry really loved battle rap. And he loved the people that he helped. Like, he really loved DNA. He really loved Charlie Clips. I think he ended up loving these guys too. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like I feel like Harry was an individual that didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Or again, this is all, you know, me just guessing. Um I feel like Harry a lot of people were his friend because he could help them. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I think that's what it was. Uh, you haven't heard nothing about Harry in how long? Is that a coincidence? I mean, last time I heard anything about Harry was when they actually 
I guess, announced the caffeine deal. They thank Harry. Harry was shutting out hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, you gotta understand, like, Capone Cigarellos and Exclusive Vodka, they weren't putting up as much as Harry. Behind the scenes, Harry was putting up ridiculous amounts of money. You know what I'm saying? And I knew Harry, but I wouldn't take money from Harry. I never asked Harry for money for an event, for PG. This was coming out of my pockets. On Legacy, my pockets. You know what I'm saying? Harry was putting up so much money, and I really feel like, and this is just being real, I felt like the only reason they were his friend was because of the money. They're trying to get Calico and them niggas to battle again. So they offering <laughs> T-top of the mad money and shit. Briz like, nah, fuck that. I don't care about the money. This is my home. And as he should, this is my town. I turn to my left and this nigga Harry sitting there with dried up shit on his face. Fucking starving. I mean, my man Boots bought me two slices. I mean, a slice. Oh, this shit good as shit. And Harry's like, I told him not to book mook. I didn't want them to book mook. Right. <laughs> and so Harry sitting there. Say that again. Let me play go. <laughs> yo, you dog. Voices, <laughs> so yo, smack, smack. Hold on, hold on, go back, go back. Oh, you sitting there? Play that again. So Harry's sitting there, right? And Harry's like, like he got like, like white, like he's starving. Now think about this. Smack over there like, yeah, you know, we gonna try to make this shit happen, and we gonna... Now, he's spending Harry money, dog. <laughs> so he's telling these niggas, right? He's telling these niggas like, yo, we'll give you like another, we'll double your salary, son. Let's just do this shit tonight, son. And I'm sitting there like this, eating my pizza, and I'm looking at Harry. This nigga done put up like 400000 for this event. I'm like, this shit crazy. And he's like, he looks at me, right? And, and now, mind you, they're trying to talk prison to get the, the, the they're offering more money type of shit. Now, mind you, they're offering more money. That's his money, right? <laughs> Think about this for a second. And this nigga turns to me and goes, Hey, Norbs, man, I told him not to book Mook. Like, I told him, don't book Mook. Mook is going to give us problem. Why do you want to book Mook? It's going to cost more money. Look what happens, right? And he goes, Norbs, I'm really hungry. And I'm like, can I have a pizza? And I'm like, and now mind you, bro, like the world stopped to me there, right? And I'm like, yo, this nigga right here got some fucking nerve. This nigga ain't eat all day, right? This nigga put up a half a million dollars for this event, right? And he's starving? Like, think about it. If a nigga put a half a million dollars in my pocket, right? I don't give a fuck what this nigga wants. So I said, damn, Harry, shit, nigga, here. Like, go eat, bro. Like, yo, you want something else? You want me to go get you something else? Oh, man, thank you. They don't got no pork on it, right? It's no pork. Now, it's just chicken. Pizza with chicken on it. He eats the pizza. So I start thinking in my head, like, how do you not appreciate a man that don't put up a half a million dollars? Right? Think about the mindset you got to be in. And you trying to spend more of his money? But he's sitting here starving. Right? And you don't give a fuck. All you care about is putting on that next banner. And you're spending his money. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there. I was like, man, here, nigga, shit, ain't that? Bro, me? Me? Harry, there's some bitches around the corner, nigga. I'll come through. I'll bring them. You, you want massages, feet rubs? I'm taking care of this man right here. How is it that this man is sitting here starving? Right? And nobody takes care of him? And you spending more? You offering these niggas his money? But yet, this nigga ain't been fed? And that shit really hit me, bro. Like, it really hit me, Chris. Like, I was like... Harry should be treated better, bro. This nigga put up millions. And he's starving sitting there. Talking about... Norse, Norse can I get a pizza? Let's switch gears real quick. Yeah. Tell me about y'all last conversation. I mean, it was April 28th. 
um, Beasley calls me. This is after all that bullshit went down. And again, like we was already like I was I was already like fed up. So when he called me, and Beasley called me, and uh, this is after numerous times trying to call him, like, yo, bro, I'm about to launch. Cause I was launching this uh, Only the Strong series, and he's like, yo, everybody's on. Now, mind you, I don't fuck with Chico. So I already knew what time it was. And at this point, like, I'm kind of like, in my head, like, bro, like, I'm reluctantly working, in a sense. So, you know, they came and, you know, all these, you know, and Beasley's doing most of the talking because he already knows that me and Chico don't rock and smack out about four words that he can really say. Um, and... You know, due to all this stuff and the new situations that we signed, and you know, we're considering that maybe we should part ways. So when I heard that, I never knew how I was gonna react to the situation, because I knew it was coming anyway. Like it was just building for time. So they give me that whole shit, and I was just like, "You guys done?" He's like, "Yeah, you know, what do you think?" And I'm like, "You know, honestly." I don't want to work with you guys anymore. So I'm cool with the separation and that's totally cool. You know what I mean? I feel like we've grown apart. I'm happy and I, and I can say whatever. And then Chico chimes in. And I was just like, what is why are you saying? talking? I don't remember exactly what he said. But I was like, Chico, I don't even know why you're talking, bro. Me and you don't fuck with each other. I don't even know why you're in this conversation. So he comes out and he's like, you're right, I don't fuck with you. No, 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 I never fuck with you. And I, my response was, at least we're being honest now. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not bullshit, my nigga. Like, I don't even know why we're having this conversation. We didn't really discuss shit anyway with you. So, whatever, Beasley calms the conversation down. So, like, it's, there was a bunch of more talks in there. You know, about the, you know, the, the situation with Turk. And I'm like, look, I'm cool with all that. I'm over that. I'm good. So when it comes to the answer, listen, I'm cool with everything you said. I'm absolutely cool with us, whatever. But, and, and I was specifically specifically speaking to Smack and Beasley, I said, yo, but I'm entitled. And Smack was basically, he was like, yo, what you mean entitled, Sean? And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, like, my response was, Smack, you're a lot smarter than that. You know what entitled means. Yo, but why do you feel you're entitled, Sean? And I'm like, my nigga, are you fucking serious? At this point, I'm like, I'm about to get fucked. Literally. Like, they're going to try to play me. And I said, smack, every nigga that you eating off of on this roster, about 98%, I put on. And Chico jumps in. What are you talking about? I didn't see you doing this. And I'm like, why is he still talking? Can you please tell this retard to shut up? Like, that's how I'm taking it at this point. And I start naming names. I'm literally, bro, like, I could stay all day naming people. And he's like, you ain't fine, Gotti. No, man, Norris, man, came to Cali. The riot, my, my, my brother, Kevin Parks, man, my home league, man. We invited Norris out. He came, watched a lot of battles. He was the first dude from any other East Coast big man. He the first dude from the URL, period, especially to come out, see me battle, and go back and be like, before he, before he went back, he told me, Yo, I'm fucking with you. We gonna bring you out over here, man. I need you. Like, that's a fact. He was the first motherfucker to hit me. Yo, we need you to come to New York. Battle. First thing you know? battle out to be like, bro. Yeah. He made a this tweet before star. I even had Twitter. He said, yo, Compton got a star. This was years ago. I don't know how long back y'all can go back on your phones, but you go back, you will see it. And it's love, man. Nothing but respect for this nigga, man. For real. And I'm like, I'll show you the video of Gotti telling people what I found. I, like, yo, bro, like, I'm not a jackass. Like, I know what I've done. And I was playing Madden fucking 12 one day. Madden, it was like 2010. Norbs called my phone. He said, I'm an A&R for you and URL. Uh, you know, we fuck with your battle. It was dope. We want to get you on. We're doing this thing called the Proving Grounds. He said, we're trying to look for artists, and you're the first artist we found. We like you. You know what I mean? We want to, we want to check you out. Norms. No Norms. 12 years. Okay. Norms is a very, very crucial part to changing my life. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Norms put me in positions to, 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 to shine early on in my career. And the same way I just said he did that for me, 
He did that for twerk. And he did that for a, a lot, lot of people. A lot of people, bro. This book Misfit and Official. He got Misfit. Her, 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 her URL debut. Oh, okay, and this okay, is okay, just, okay. This okay. Is just a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. See, he is very crucial behind the scenes. Crucial, very, very, bro. Yeah. Very, very mm -hmm. crucial. Okay, okay. So Smack is like, and I, and I, you know, he's like, he's kind of like befuddled at this point. And he tells me, but who did you put on? I was like this. Did this nigga just say, who did I put on, bro? Like, how do you look at yourself in the mirror and tell me that? Money, I almost got shot in fucking Detroit on Joy Road recruiting. All types of shit, bro. So don't tell me that shit, bro. So at this point, I was kind of like... My, my, the wheels started turning in my head. So... He goes, all right, all right, everybody chill, everybody chill. And he goes, all right, yo, I'm going to get back to him. I said, what are you going to get back to me on, Smack? He goes, yo, we, we going to come up with a number, and we going to figure it out, Sean. I said, all right, cool, you come up with a number? All right, cool. Once we do that, we can do whatever we need to do, make an announcement, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I hang my phone. I put my phone on, on, on uh, airplane mode. And... Something told me to turn my phone back on. And when I turn my phone back on, it's April 28th, it's around 4.30 or something like that. I get like a hundred text messages. They're like, yo, keep your head up, keep your head up, keep your head up, keep your head up. And I'm like, the fuck? So I text back, I was like, what are y'all talking about? I just had a conversation with these dicks. And my, my little bro, Matt, was like, he sends me the, the resolution letter, uh, the dissolvement letter. I read this shit, I said, ain't this a bitch? And I just started thinking to myself, like, these motherfuckers. Like, I didn't get an offer, bro. Right? He felt like he shouldn't have paid me anything. So I'm sitting there like, I didn't agree for this letter. You feel me? One. I'm a fucking partner. You're not treating me like one. You feel me? I'm trying to keep it cool. I'm cool with leaving Chris at this point. I'm cool. But I said, yo, you got to buy me out. Period. I'm not going to make nothing public. And you drop a public statement on me without my consent? Right? Now everybody's killing me everywhere. So I'm sitting back like this. I'm getting killed, killed. Hey. What if URL would have uh, fired Norbs in a trailer? Ten years ago, we were united as one. He traveled all over the world to find scouts for the URL TV. But years later, things transpired. A baby mama was contacted, and you can't copy the pussy. So tune in April 28th as we fire street star Norbs. URL TV. You can't copy respect. You're fired. Get the fuck out of here. I am Beasley. I got a text from Beasley about 15 minutes later. Yo, bro, we gonna fix everything. Just give me the Wednesday, we gonna take care of it. I say, yo, Beast, text them back. Y'all owe me, you know, whatever. But I also put out another like 30,000 for events that are about to come up. So y'all gonna, y'all finna pay me back for that too. Right? April 28th. Two weeks later, my grandmother, I think like two, three weeks later, my grandmother dies from the COVID. So I'm going through the COVID. I'm going through mad shit right now. Grandmother's on the respirator. I get a text from Beasley, like my condolences. I look at this shit. I don't even respond. I'm like, you lied to my face one, Beasley. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you didn't, we had this relationship as brothers, we spoke every day about business. We've been partners for how long? Almost 11 years. And when I told you in that conversation, I said, Bees, you know that you gotta break me off. And he was like, I never said that. And I was like, I was like, all right, you know. So, when I read that shit, I was like, why are you acting like you even give a fuck about me, bro? Because I loved you for all, these, all this time, bro. I loved you like a brother. I'd have done anything for Beasley. 
And when it kind of t- 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 time to tell the truth, you turn your back on me, dog. Knowing you niggas owe me, and I'm waiting on a settlement, and you didn't even. I'm waiting on a, 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 an agreement, a number, and you don't even give me the number. But you got the nerve to send me my condolences. Like if you give a fuck. I looked at it and I was like, all right. That's when I started to um. You know, I have to. I knew at that point I had to get a lawyer. So after the condolences, you basically never heard from him again. No, the hill bro, never. Check this shit out. So I started the case. So me and my lawyers were talking. You know, whatever. I, like I said, like I wanted to give them every opportunity to make it right. Bro, at this point, I'm waiting for a number. So April 28th passes, May 28th passes, June 28th passes. I wait three and a half months, right? Nobody hits me. My lawyer's like, you ready to pull the trigger? I said, pull the trigger. Now, mind you, I said, yo, let's, 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 let's send Now, at this offer. point, do you have a number in your head? Like, are you thinking, okay, they hit me back, they give me X amount of dollars. At this point, I'm good. I'm, at this point, I'm open to a conversation. Okay. Now, when you get in lawyers involved, they don't give a fuck about conversation. They care about getting you with whatever. But they knew, I've been in control of the situation, that what a fair assessment was for me. Right? Now, mind you, I served them. Now, mind you. Now, hold on. Hold, hold. I'm talking about actually before you get them involved. When when you first say, you know, when Smack is like, we're going to figure this out. And, you know, you take your couple of days or whatever. As you sitting back chilling, are you thinking... Okay, this is this is a fair amount. They call me back with X amount of dollars. Yeah, I mean, I'll walk away, wish them the best, move on with my life. Absolutely. But that's all I ever wanted was right. like a fair. And I wasn't even trying to go crazy. Like I wasn't being greedy. You know what I'm saying? But I got a daughter, two-year-old daughter. I got a one-year-old son. You know what I'm saying? This is how I make my bones. Right? I'm thinking you're going to make it right. Not only I shut out money for, for new events and shit like that. Or whatever. I don't pay battlers and shit. The weekend before they get served, which was known. Um I see a blog. And I see smack smack. Yeah, yeah, nah, it's just been business, son. That's my brother. It's business, son. See Beasley say the same thing. I love him as a person. I wish him the best. Okay. I don't got nothing bad to say about him. It's my personal friend, but like, you know what I'm saying? Business is business. And I'm sitting there and I'm like this. You're calling me your brother. You said it's just business. You haven't reached out to me at all to make this right. If it's just business and you calling me your brother, don't you think it's right to make an offer or call? Be like, listen, we're going to buy you off of XYZ? No. They felt like I wasn't going to be able to pull off and, or, or, or get representation for myself. When I seen that interview, I was like, it's just business. And it clicked in my head because I was feeling bad at the time. Like, I don't really want to serve them. You feel me? I really would like to handle this closed doors. When I seen that shit, and this nigga talking about, yeah, you know, I'm going to be on a yacht this weekend. I said, oh, this nigga think I'm pussy. You, you, you smell something, man? You smell something out here. You smell here. something, Sam? I smell it. I smell it. I smell pussies. Yo, man, forget this, Forget man. him when he's... So. All right, cool. And we served him. And when I served him, right before known, that's the last time they spoke about me. So well, this is what fans got to understand. That, at that point, they don't speak about me for the rest of the time. They don't even respond to the letter. They ignore it. My lawyer was like, yo, they never respond. I said, they didn't respond? Now, I sent them an offer, right? And in the offer was a number, right? That I said, I'm, I'm comfortable with. But it was negotiable. Like, let's, like, I'm sending them a letter like, yo, this is what I want, but it's open to negotiation. You could, you could just call and be like, yo, you bugging, right? You didn't even want to negotiate. All right, cool. Two and a half weeks later, my lawyer rescinds the offer. He says, the lawyer, this rescinded. We're going to need to open the books to get an accurate account of the books. Because now you have not responded to what Mr. Velez wanted. 
and you know we still are open to you know basically litigation or whatever um you know but if you don't respond we're gonna go to trial this is the first time they respond they respond with em with threats and they respond with a take me to court so that is one two three it's three letters before I file so on my birthday I told my lawyers I wanted to file on my birthday because every year on my birthday I want to do something dope All right, man, so you came out with this lawsuit. Yep. You serve URL. Yep. How are you able to determine your worth? It's hard to determine my worth. Um, I mean... Because when you put a number on a, on a particular lawsuit, then somehow, some way, you, you, come and, you tend to think that maybe you value yourself a certain way. Or, or how, how, how are you able to come to a number and, and determine <laughs> your worth? Uh, you know, that's why I leave this to my lawyers and I leave this to, you know, professionals. I, I, I don't do that. A lot of lawsuits end in settlements. Do you have a dollar amount in your head? I, I want know it you're all. not going to say it on camera. I'm no, not going to even ask I want, you. I want I what I'm going to In your mind, are you like, you know what? Maybe the 40 million I'm tripping. Maybe I'm not tripping. Maybe I can't get 40 million. But if they say this, this, and this right now. I'll settle. Do you have a dollar amount in your head that you'll be like, I may do something with this? Everything I said in there is what I want. So with all the criticism you got, maybe the lack of support, maybe, you know, falling out with Nunu, falling out with P, falling out with Chico, relationship dissolving with Smack, what made you stick in there all this time? First of all, I didn't care about falling out with Nunu, nor P, none of that shit. What I really cared about was what I built from scratch brick by brick with my brothers and my partners and knowing where it was going to go and being there when it's there when he finally gets there and seeing where it's going to go so like that's pretty much why I stood by bro you won't give up on something you built you know what I'm saying you know I'm not super duper religious but I feel like God put me in a place in a situation and was like you thought these were your friends right you're gonna I'm gonna put you through this right now right and you're gonna see who's who. It's kinda, and it's crazy, you came in my mind. Because when you went through what you went through, I seen everybody, people you helped, say a bunch of shit. And it, it was kinda, I gotta thank you because you were kinda influential in what I was doing because you got, you went through something that most men can never go through. And I was like, you know what? I gotta take a page from Chris and not allow this to eat me alive and come back stronger. So I started to focus and I started to see who's who, who's really there, who's my friend, who's really whatever. And I'll be honest with you, Chris, like I could count my friends on my hand. Do you feel like you being dissolved of right around a caffeine situation is a coincidence? <laughs> no, I don't. Did and money change y'all? Not so much, maybe not you, but do you feel like it changed them? Yeah, I believe so. I think it's more than money. I think, I think, fame changed smack attention. You know what I'm saying? People always ask me, would you ever work with them again? And I would never, ever work with them again. If we were on the red carpet together, I wouldn't acknowledge them. I wouldn't shake their hand. Nothing. You know, they left me and my family for dead. And that's something that I'll never forgive them. I know what I did. They know what I did. There ain't no way in hell Eric Troy or Gene can look in the mirror and deny that shit. Period, bro. Like, I cried with them. You know what I'm saying? We all, we all lost together. You feel me? We built this shit together. You feel me? What, 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 what happened? You know what I'm saying? Was it the bag? And that's what people don't understand, bro. Like, money changes people, bro.